Hey there, hi there, cozy folks. How y'all doing? How y'all doing on this lovely Friday? Some premium dad jokes in the chat today. Got me chortling over here. Uh, and some free stream subage. Ailey's, thanks for 23 months. Closing in on two full years. Meanwhile, Kaller Durin went away from three full years. Thank you for the prime and the 35 months. Terra 21, new name, new you. But same Cozy Baylor streams. Good stuff. Really good stuff. Glad to still have you around. Dr. Dracy with a full year. High five to you. And hello and welcome to everybody. How's it going, Stregonoth? Zizivification. Storm of the Seas. Renraku. Wookie Nipples back. I am the trolley. French Fry Apocalypse. What's up, Drop of Flame? How's it going, Charnan? Okart Monster says, I've never played FTL, but I always have that music going while I play Slice and Dice. So you now think of it as the Slice and Dice soundtrack. It's good stuff. I liked the, the Hades soundtrack uh, for, for Slice and Dice quite a lot. How's it going, Terminal Tractor? Spire still holds your interest after all this time. Mine too. It's a delight to be able to say that. Um, Pampuli was in here the other day asking if the Spire still giveth entertainment after all these years. And the answer is yes. Even if we don't always win the run in order to achieve it, actually. We just very recently had a run that was spectacularly fun. It was a true shame to lose this one to the heart, but we had double reboot, double Hello World, four claws, two scrapes, five stacks. And it was almost good enough to beat the heart. Very close. This was an absolute ludicrous run. Uh, and we actually convincingly defeated the, the bosses. So if you were just looking at A20 no heart, this deck decisively crushed the game, which is quite cool. But couldn't quite hack it in Act 4. Uh, I did mark this one for YouTube. I think this is a perfect example of a, a YouTube loss vid that I think will be really good because it's a stupendously ludicrous deck. Our 330th mastered card was Grand Finale. I think there was also, um, at the same time, there was one we had previously missed on the spreadsheet, so it got updated and, and included in the count. That's happened a couple times. I've been off by one due to not quite sufficiently meticulous bookkeeping. But we can get it all sorted out in the end. So the current unmastered card count stands at, to my knowledge, 22. Scant few cards remain, most of them colorless and curse, as well as one relic, the champ belt. And today, the ironclad is going to step up to bat. I'm thinking that we may, in a very near future ish time, swap away from rotating character runs and start just picking our character as we go for each run uh, to deliberately try to master the remaining few cards of this challenge. The only thing that can give me anything unmastered here is choose a colorless card. I'm also down for remove two. Remove two. I'm thinking that uh, particu particularly on the ironclad, we should start to take a lot more event nodes in our runs in order to try to get more card masteries achieved here. Looks like a lot of elite before first rest site paths here. There's one way to, to avoid going into an elite first, and that's to take only one elite in the whole act, which is usually below par. It's kind of sad. Colorless card or common relic would help with that. So I'm thinking it's one of the top two starts here. Will the Iron Lad finally be able to hold up his pants? That is the question. Our winning Game Boat game this month was Dave the Diver, and that's what we're going to be playing tomorrow at the start of stream. We're going to be diving into Dave's adventure underwater slash on his farm. Odd game, as, as I understand it. I'm really looking forward to um, immersing myself into it.
It does seem like the sort of game that basically anybody can have fun with. So it should be a, should be a time. It's very, very slow paced. That, that makes sense. Have I played Dredge? Can't say that I have. As a viewer says, I've got 1,200 hours in this game and you're still feeling like a noob. It's a very difficult game. Very, very difficult game. So I think I think all of us are, are still kind of novices at this game in our own way. Even those with us oh, those of us with thousands of hours. I also owe the chat a dad joke for the light lord. The Lord of the Sun. Actually we'll we'll use an oldie buddy goodie since I've got sun on the mind. Um A photon is checking on to a plane. The stewardess of the gate asks, Are you packing any bags today? The photon replies, No. I'm traveling light. Let's take a colorless card. Aha! We do have one with the not mastered label, Trip, which is even a good card for ironclad. Zero cost, two vuln. You'll love to see it. Cam Guy DV, thanks so much for 13 months of the Prime Sub. The Baker's Dozen. And Biggins. I guess starting card trip probably means the early elite is not off the menu entirely. Still would like to take maybe one or two events. If we get money, we can go to the shop. Cool, let's start here. Always be tripping. Good jaw worm fight when you don't take 12 on turn one. I'm pretty happy so far. Okay, I'm getting less happy. But only a little bit. Ow. Hey. Can't do that again. It's illegal. Become trippist. Okay, not a bad jaw worm fight, all things considered. It is a bad amount of gold to receive, but that's okay. Clothesline, Shrug it off, and Havoc are the first three cards offered. Shrug is kind of nice with a zero cost card in the deck. Clothesline's a bit expensive. I often find it doesn't deal enough damage, but it's a pretty good first upgrade. I guess it does okay into early elites. Take a shrug. I think block card is, is a good uh, first card pick in particular, as it makes your second and third fights uh, a lot more consistent. All right, we have mastered regret, so let's just take a max health up here at the the big fish event. We are looking for curses, but not this particular curse. I would like to find a uh, pain on this character in particular, so that's my hope is that we can get uh, two copies of pain on one of these runs. Could look for a second copy of Trip in the shop, but I don't think 109 gold is really worth it here, so I think we're just going to head into another event. Could go three combats instead if I wanted to, but as aforementioned, for the purposes of the Mastery Challenge, I think we want to go a little bit more event-heavy here. And that just turns into lose some health, gain some gold, which I'm fine to do. Completely happy doing that. Fifteen incoming damage. We could full block. We are unlikely to be able to block substantially next turn, and they may both attack next turn. So I think we should only block one time here. Strike one of them for six, so that we can kill this one next turn. Otherwise, if they both attack again, we're in uh, big trouble here. Neither of them attack again. So we take the slight punish, and we'd be okay with that. Ooh, 
Cleave, Iron Wave, and Flex. Definitely want a, want a damage card here, given that we've already taken a non-damaging skill. Especially if we intend to fight an elite any time in the near future, we're going to need an attack card. And I think the Cleave is pretty good for that purpose. Um, that would also go well with Trip if we upgrade it. It will apply to uh, all enemies. Hey, you're heckin' welcome, Slamta. Who is the boss? Uh, I feel like it was Guardian. Yes, it is Guardian. Guardian's the boss. I think we take a cleave here. Cleave is not a particularly exciting card most of the time, but it gets the job done, and that's what you need. I also need these slimes to not be doing so much damage. The only good news is here that the small slime rolled less than less than 13 hit points, so we can kill it in two strikes and not take too much damage. We're all the boss. Perhaps the real boss was the friends we made along the way. Heck yeah. Take the money. Double cleave. Should be called Great Cleave. Interesting. What mod shows card percentages and potion percentages? That's showed by... Info mod. Exclamation point info mod has a link to that. That one is not on the Steam Workshop, one of the uh, one of a few mods we use that are not uh, publicly available through Steam. But are publicly available through GitHub, so get yourself onto the hub. Here. Info mod there you go. I think we do take a second cleave. It's kind of basic, but I think it'll be effective. And any multi-enemy fight, we're going to feel really good about our choice. Let's see who this elite is. I I'm prepared to use the Heart of Iron here if we need to. Guess who it is? Three sentries. And I dare say that's a pretty good matchup for double cleave, the build. We trip the one with the most health or the least health? Since I'm removing artifact, I think I want to trip the one with the most health. We still want to kill the one with the least health first. But the idea is we eventually draw back into... Trip. Might have actually been correct not to... Um, not to draw there, but I think we're okay. Also thinking this Heart of Iron is likely to make a huge difference in this fight. As we're not killing particularly quickly, it means we full block with only one block draw. Probably 20 to 30 hit points here. Let's let's do it. Like I said, I was prepared to use the Heart of Iron in this fight, and we're not that strong. Definitely gonna strike one time here. Do we defend? This makes us only take one. We need this thing to be dead by two turns from now, though. Next turn, we're going to play Defend, Strike, Cleave, I assume. Or maybe it'll actually be Strike, Strike, Cleave. That would deal a clean 20. That's still not enough. Hmm. I guess we'll play it slow, because of the Heart of Iron. The irony of it all. This is fine. Just keep cleaving. And here's where the targeting of the Vuln earlier matters. Wish I could play both the Bash and the Strike here. Let's do this. Excellence. Now you die cleanly to two strikes. Mm -hmm. 
very clean fight, thanks to that uh, potion. I think that was the, the correct use of that potion. Very, very strong in that fight in particular. Nice clean fight. We pick up a question card for more card reward options from here on out. <clears throat> We're offered a Thunderclap or Shockwave to go with the trip. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if I want either of those, actually. I guess Thunderclaps may be okay. Probably skip, though. Yeah, just upgrade trip, I think. Although the AoE weakness is still a thing. Tiz, thanks for the uh, three months in advance sub. What's the goal on Ironclad runs at this point? Yeah, essentially hope for hope for curses. Hope to find curses, try to get colorless cards in pairs too. And I guess we'll start taking Prismatic Shard as well because of the chance for colorless cards. That's probably true on every character now. Is the champ belt a shop-only relic? No, it is an ironclad-only rare relic. Is what it is. Hmm. Returns a week is pretty good. This is good against both Legavulin and Gremlin Knob, notably. Alright, we'll take it. Uh, I think we can go for the Burning Elite. If we want to. Or we can upgrade twice, go to an Elite and a shop. Or we can go four elites, no rest site. Hmm. So, upgrades or no upgrades? I do like the idea of upgrading Trip and both Cleaves to really slap in Act 2. Have you mastered Runic Cube? Oh yeah, we managed to do that quite a while ago. I like this route, actually. We took the extra money, so the shop is particularly valuable. We could even just go for the Burning Elite and then still go this way. Actually, that might even be better. Ooh, I like that route. Yeah, let's do that. Surely nothing could go wrong, right? Winky face. Hmm. Gotta do some math here. So next turn, our best damage is Cleave, Cleave, Strike for 12 plus 12 plus 9, 24 plus 9, 33. So the only way to get him below 33 is to Bash Strike here. Next turn, we either get Entangled or Attack for 21. And if we get Entangled, we get Attack for 21 on the following turn, I think. So it's probably worth it to just do Bash Strike. We also might not actually draw all the damage cards. There's a 50-50 chance we don't. In which case, we can only do 24, and we still don't kill. Hmm. I guess if we Shockwave, it won't be for 21. It would be for 16. We don't take very much. Okay, let's do Shockwave Defend. Play it slow. Yeah, that's reasonable. Because so far, this is less damage taken than we would have taken immediately with Bash Strike. Unfortunately, we can't finish the job here. So we have to take five more. But we should be able to kill next turn. Good. Okay, not the worst Red Slaver fight. Definitely could have been worse. Would have preferred finding a potion, but here we are. We are offered a Disarm, Twin Strike, and a Headbutt. I think we might need the Headbutt, just to have enough damage to get through this Burning Elite. Seems like Disarm won't cut it. If we're fighting Gremlin Ob or Leg of Ulin, Disarm will not cut it. Disarm is definitely nice for Guardian, but because of the path we chose, we, we need to take a card that helps us with this encounter, or we're, we're toast here. So let's take Headbutt. It is an angry gremlin knob. I don't think I need a regen potion here. At least we got turn one trip. That's pretty good. And we can headbutt the trip if we want to. Although it looks like I am unlikely to kill next turn. Maybe we do shockwave next turn instead. Grant and Chips, thanks for the prime sub in the nine months. Thank you. So, Gremlin Knob has 38 health. We can never do 38 in one turn. Not even with Cleave, Cleave, Strike. So, 
So next turn is either going to be Bash Cleave or Shockwave Cleave, depending on what we draw. I guess we'll just Headbutt Cleave then. Don't need hit to put Trip on top. Going to take 10 plus 27, actually a little bit less. We do get Shockwave Cleave. That'll deal another 12, bring Knob to 26. Three strikes would do it, but I could draw two defends next turn. Uh, if we go Bash Cleave, we take a little bit more damage, but we get the kill guaranteed, right? We would do 8 plus 12, brings to 18. That's an exact kill. I think I would like to hedge my bets here. Take a little bit more damage up front. Just take the 27, go to 20, 26 after the fight, and definitively win this encounter. That sounds good to me. Let's see what the draw is. Oh! Well, actually, we, we don't know what the, this card would have been if I had played the Shockwave, but this definitely might have been a punish, so glad I took the route that we did. Sundial! Every three times we shuffle the draw pile, gain two energy. A lot of ways for Clad to use the Sundial very effectively, like deleting their own cards with True Grit. That said, see an offering, take an offering is definitely a thing I can get behind. It's a very powerful card, offering lots of immediate draw and energy, crucially making it possible to play vulnerable cards and a bunch of attacks at the same time. How's it going, Saint Dreamer? Hello and welcome. Always happy to see people coming in from the YouTube. Let's take the offering. Feel like Body Slam 100% needs the upgrade? I, I feel like that's usually the case, yeah. Body Slam definitely benefits from an upgrade. Reservoir Dog says, when it says lose 6 HP, can armor block it? No. Lose health effects will ignore your block. However, there are ways to reduce the damage. The Relic Tungsten Rod will cause you to take one fewer damage. If you have the buffer effect, usually from the fossilized helix relic, that will prevent the damage outright. And lastly, if you're intangible, which reduces all damage to one, then the offering will only deal one damage to you. Oh yeah, sorry about the shaky cam. I can fix that there. That was me. I was doing that. just jittery. Okay, we got all the rewards? Yes, good. Here, go here. I think we're on track to fight another elite, no problem. Thanks to the regen potion. Oh, and we get courier, which is going to mean a discount at the shop. This is powerful. Gooseberry, thanks for the 26 months in the prime sub. The double dad's baker's dozen. Cursed with doubt for a lot of money, more money than usual. All I have to do is fight an elite with a doubt in my deck. Surely that's not hard, right? I mean, we'll be rich. The most fulfilling of lives. With the courier, this is a slightly better deal than normal, so I think I might take it here. And Slamta, thanks for the four months. It's prime time. It's time for prime. Yeah, effectively 180 gold. That's correct. This will all be worth it. Thank you, Snake. Hey, grats on winning A19 Ironclad, Faley. One away from the tippest of tops. The very heights of power. So this could be sentries. I'm going to upgrade Trip. Not necessarily for now, maybe for later, but... It's a cool card upgrade. I want the upgrade to happen. Let's make it happen as we go into our elite fight here. Let's see, three turns a week. Do we want to weaken you immediately? I think we play Shockwave turn one, probably wake up turn two. That way we benefit from one of the weak turns. But also Liquid Memories, the Shockwave. But I think I'd prefer to hold on to that potion. <clears throat> Let's use the regen potion. 
So we could play the strike right now and wake up to take advantage of both weak turns. But I'm not going to. I feel like we can get a better open here. Guess I'll headbutt a strike. Guess I will. Oof. Alright, maybe I regret things a little bit. Ah! Definitely the wrong order of cards. Bummer. Alright, the good news is we don't die. At least not yet. That's definitely not how we want this to go, though. Very painful. Definitely very painful. Still has 59 HP, huh? Hmm. You might need that liquid memories after all. Oh, shoot. I think we might be dead, actually. Damn it. This has to be Bash, Headbutt, Liquid Memories, Headbutt? Anything else is going to be a failure here. Okay, that was enough. Cool. Uh, I thought I was going to get us killed there for a second. Playing with the curse into that fight was a little bit more risky than I realized. However, we're through with 464 gold times 1.2, a bag of marbles, and another good card reward. I think we're going to get strength pretty soon, so I like Pummel. Found this game more fun on A15. I found this game more fun on Ascension 15 for a very long time. I streamed Ascension 15 runs for a while after Ascension 20 was released. And it wasn't until I had maybe like 2,000 hours of, of Slay the Spire experience that A20 didn't feel like a miserable face grinding experience. Now I'm comfortable and, and cozy on A20, but it took a really long time to get here. I, I did not like this difficulty for a very long time. A A15 was the highest difficulty for a modest portion of this game's early access period. Uh, and I think it's probably the, the most well-balanced difficulty level the devs came up with. Very difficult, but very consistently winnable if you're making really good choices in the game. Whereas A20 escalated that such that every run is at risk, almost no matter what you do. St. Dreamer says, what's the optimal way to prepare for the two act three bosses? You need to ration resources. I like to go into that fight with high health and, and multiple potions or that gauntlet more accurately. Uh, I need to sort of ration health between two fights. And you also need to prepare your deck for all three possibilities. Since you can't know which two bosses you're going to fight, you have to sort of account for all three. That means not having too many powers, unless the powers also give you a lot of block, um, not being dependent on too much card spam, although as long as your cards are doing about 10 numeric output each, whether it's block or damage, you can beat Time Eater. And you just need to have a, a pretty good aggression plan to deal with Donu Deca. Last Kerfuffle with three years finally made it. Thanks for the wonderful content and the wonderful community. You're heckin' welcome. Was A20 released before Act 4? Yes. Yes, there was... Oh, that was also a problem, actually. Um, there, there was a period where the highest difficulty was Ascension 20, but the finale of the game was the, the double Act 3 boss gauntlet. And I found that really unfun as a, a final confrontation. It was just too repetitive, since you were fighting 2 out of 3 on every single run. Oddly enough, I don't feel that way about the heart, even though it's the exact same heart fight every run. Let's take a pummel. 
Fighting Guardian, we might need to rest. Let's see what the shop has first. Let's get these cleaves up. I want the cleaves to slap. Ooh. An unmastered card, Violence, is here. Oh, we can use the Courier to buy a lot of colorless cards, actually. We should strongly consider this. Luigi Head with 14 months of the Prime Sub. Woo! To you, too. Shuriken is, struggles to be a thing on Ironclad, I usually find. This deck could could maybe get some strength out of it. What's the best way to stop taking high damage at the beginning of Act 2 to birds slash muggers? Um, be willing to use a potion. If you can save a potion from the Act 1 boss to use in the first fight of Act 2, I find it often is uh, quite nice. Um, and the other option is is just get, get good front load. Uh, weakness in particular really helps with the birds. Like the shockwave is going to do really good fight, good in the bird fight, uh, as will the pummel. But for the muggers and thieves, you just need to be able to do 50 damage on turn one to make it nice and easy. That's pretty hard to do. But if you're on silent, multiple backstabs can help. Um, defect doesn't really get there without hyper beam or sunder. Beam cell sunder does it really easily, actually. A relic like Bag of Marbles can help a lot. Free Voln turn one. All right, let's buy the violence first. Hmm. Do I buy the 81 gold Dark Shackles or the 65 gold Dark Shackles? Hmm. I think we've also got a sac effectively an upgrade in a jar here. I said we wanted to rest before Guardian. Not if I buy the Blood Potion. Do blood Potion. Dork Shackles. Impatience, I don't think so. Card Remove looks pretty okay. Fiend Fire at a discount looks pretty dang good too. We definitely want to get rid of this Doubt. Let's do that next. Yeah, I'll buy a Fiend Fire. Cool. That should be plenty. And then we don't even need to drink the potion, actually, immediately. We can just rest, or we can just upgrade for having it. Let's upgrade Fiendfire, actually. And then we can upgrade Offering and Violence. Violence to get Fiendfire on turn one. Interesting. Really interesting. play this. I will do it. Yeah, here's a thingy. Perfect. Let's go violence. Get a bunch of attacks into my hand. We're gonna headbutt a card that I don't want. Headbutt strike. Shrug to get strike into my hand. Delete all of these. Maybe defend one time. Although two defends and one shrug honestly seems like enough here. Nah, we probably want one more shrug. Or one more block. So yeah, RIP our deck of cards here. But it's actually a good thing, right? Still get five cards per turn. Having fewer cards just means we have fewer options from which to draw those cards, and that may be a good thing. Definitely is here. I think I take two, keep the Dark Shackle. It's a pretty useful card. Right. Hmm, take four to deal 16. Probably not. Let's go with no. We got Sundial working for us now. He works for us now. Okay, trip has already been applied plenty of times. Let's just do this. Let's 
good. Getting a bit scared there for a minute. But all is well, I think. Uh, what is this? Headbutt, defend, shrug, defend. We should be able to kill before we take substantially more damage. Yeah. I think we get through this with our with both of our potions intact. I think so. Hopefully cutting it close here. Again, we bought the blood potion so that we could get away with this. Easy peasy. Nice. Very nice. Oh, we should update the uh, game book command, actually. D money with the seven months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How's it going, Cool B? Not sure what I'll play later. Might be Brotato, might be Monster Train. Got some more expert challenges to do. We're offered another Fiend Fire, a Barricade, a Brutality, or another Offering. Hmm. Second Offering means a lot of self-damage. I do like Double Offering as a general rule, though. Threat Level Midnight with a Gifted Sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, Sir Night Train. Which of the form cards is the best slash most fun? I would say Echo Form, personally. I am an Echo Form lover. I will take second offering. And I think discard the skill potion, pick up the explosive potion, keep blood potion, explosive potion into the next act. Was wondering if we would see the runic cube. Interesting. I think we could also very happily take black star here, get extra relics off the elites. When a cube would make the offerings draw one more, it would also mean we draw when damaged by enemies for any reason. Statman with two gifted subs. Ubla says, I love how Demon Form comes around on A20 as a problem solved card. Just having a, a lot of power in one card is very valuable. Very, very valuable. Same with Creative AI. Also a problem-solved card, although it's kind of unreliable sometimes. With Runic Cube, would I have been more likely to take the Brutality? Definitely. Runic Cube Brutality is a really cool combo that I like quite a lot. And Threat Level Midnight with three gifted subs. The one-upping continues. How to use Runic Cube, says Sithu. The idea with Runic Cube is you're getting a lot of card draw. You may want to add cards that damage yourself slightly. Um, Brutality is really good. Bloodletting is really good. Hemokinesis is okay. Combust is quite bad, though, because of the timing of the effect. It happens at end of turn, right before you discard your cards. So you can't, ben you can't actually benefit from the card. But the idea is that you add a lot of zero-cost slash cheap cards like Anger, Rage, Bloodletting, Flex, and use your ability to draw large hands to end fights quickly and decisively. One of the most useful things the Runic Cube can do is versus the Heart at the very end of the game, where the Beat of Death effect, you take damage after playing a card, means after you play a card, draw a card, which Ironclad loves. Can Runic Cube work with, work with the Sundial? It could, although you can't go infinite with Runic Cube, usually, because that would require infinite HP. Cube is just cool in general. So for here, uh, here for example, the fact that we have the Dark Shackles and the Trip and the Sundial all actually speak to getting a bit more card draw. Let's let's try a Runic Cube. I think it's just a cool, cool relic to take here. Hmm. Could go to an early shop. We don't have that much money, but we have enough to make a shop kind of worthwhile. 
Any reason why the potions are different shaped? I, I guess just to be visually distinct from one another. There's a, a bunch of... A handful of different potion shapes and then potion colors that the devs use to make visually distinct potions. They did a pretty good job of making all of them look different, even though there's 20 plus in the game now. Potions, that is. Hmm. Plenty of rest site options. I like it. Uh, upgrading these offerings would improve the deck substantially. I'd also love to get the other cleave upgraded still. One big thing we'd like to get our hands on at this point is strength. So someone is asking, how do you not get destroyed by these nerds on turn one? Sometimes the answer is you just do get destroyed by them also. Um, you just have to take the damage and then make up for it in the rest of the act. And that, that is uh, definitely the case here. We're, we're going to get chumped by these nerds. And there's not a whole lot I can do. But I do get to draw more cards thanks to Runic Cube. Probably just go Shockwave Cleave, lower their health. We draw seven cards next turn. We're going to be down 16 health, but we'll get 10 of that back. So it's only like we're down 10 health. And I'll probably be able to drink this blood potion soon. That's how I'm feeling. I do think we want to cleave over playing defend here. Oof. Ouch. But more cards in hand means we're more likely to see things like the Fiend Fire. Offering deals an awful lot of damage, so I'm not gonna play it. Damage to us, that is. I'm gonna kill this fool. Draw another bonus card. I choose violence. Sundial tried to help, but it didn't. Battle Trance, another way to get more cards into our hand. Draw three cards, but we cannot draw further cards on our turn. I choose to believe that this will help us. It might not in certain situations because of the no further draw effect, but in such fights, we may be able to pick up a card later to exhaust it. Oh, hey, an Unmastered Curse. Decay. At the end of your turn, take two damage. I think we try to pick that up. Violence is not drawing. That's correct. Violence is putting them into your hand, which is different. Yeah, I don't want to lose 28 health, quite frankly, although taking the damage and then drinking the blood potion is not bad. But I am presented here with an opportunity to take one of the cards we're hunting for on this character. As ever, we're looking for cards fitting our Slay the Spire Mastery Challenge. We have to get cards with the Not Mastered label into our deck in duplicate and then win with them. Cursed Tome, hold on a second. What do we have here? The Necronomicon is what we have. There's an unmastered card. Necronoma curse. There is no escape from this curse. And the Necronomicon relic to go with it. The first attack being played, costing two or more, gets played two times. Holy crap, Twitch chat. It's here. This could be the run that we've been waiting for this whole time. It's here. Unfortunately, we can't get the second violence now. And we still have to win the run, which may be a challenge now that I've added three curses to the deck for ostensibly no benefit whatsoever. Good luck to us. Blue Candle when? Blue Candle when? Okay, we should probably go to a rest site first. I'm thinking less elites, more rest sites. Sounds great. Let's go here. It's time to spin the wheel. I forget, do you give me a decay curse or a regret curse? Can you remind me of that, please? Give me a relic. Come on, blue candle. Blue candle. A gift. A boat thingy. That's pretty good, but it's no blue candle. Duvu doll, also very acceptable. Very, very acceptable. I think this is the next upgrade. Uh, also accept the offering upgrades and the violence upgrade. Let's do cleave first. 
We need some two cost attacks now. We have one or two to dupe with the hey, the Necronomicon. Bash, for example. Fiendfire can also get duped. Let me just check something here. 15 times 8. No. Although, wait. 20. Plus 10. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. This is how we kill a gremlin leader. So, Fiend Fire does 15 times 7, which is 105. However, The Necronomicon duplicates the Fiend Fire, which normally doesn't do anything because there are no cards in your hand the second time. But the particular curse that we have here, the Necronomic Curse, returns to your hand if exhausted. And so when you dupe Fiend Fire with Necronomic Curse in your hand, you get one more hit from the Fiend Fire for exact lethal there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Card draw is good, especially card draw with the double offerings. This deck almost wants a flex. Dog Barker with the gifted sub to HG Forest. Yeah, what a clippable moment, right? That's a good one for the clips shout out. What a cool little interaction there. Yeah, this, that also works with Dark Embrace. And there are a few other ways to get um, cards into your hand between the first and the second Fiend Fire which I encourage you to speculate about. Dead Branch is one of them. I think Ink Bottle, yeah, Ink Bottle can do it. Not sure about Unceasing Top. You might be able to get cards in hand um, from Puzzle if you hit an enemy with spikes. That would draw cards. Spikes and Runic Cube would also draw cards. Now we can upgrade one of these. Gremlin Horn. Gremlin Horn can do it. And then, actually, nobody has yet listed my favorite way to get an, another card into your hand for the second Fiend Fire. Oh my goodness, it's here. Holy crap, Twitch chat, this is the run. Unplayable curse cards can now be played. Whenever you play a curse, lose one hit point and exhaust it. Excellent. Excellent. Now we just need the Rupture and the Reaper, and we're we're truly, truly Giga Chad clad with the with the perfect deck. Yeah, the first time you catch me live, Leaf Blade Fighter, it's your day. Yes, that, that's right. Laga Laga Log's got it. Killing the Bronze Automaton's minion will get a card into your hand that you can use for the second Fiend Fire. That's the one. Does Necronomicurse come back from Blue Candle? Yes. And Runic Cube draws a card. So we now have a, two curses that say, as many times as you want per turn, pay one health to draw a card. That's very strong. Also, the Centennial Puzzle means the first time we do it, we get one more card. Or th three more cards. Ex excuse me. Four cards from the first curse play. Absurd. Absurd. And then if we find a rupture, oh boy, it gets even sillier. But you have no target for the second Fiendfire, says Setch. Correct, which is why the kill needs to occur from Charon's Ashes, with the Fiendfire targeting the Bronze Automaton. 
You, you play doubled Fiend Fire. The first Fiend Fire hits Bronze Automaton. The exhaust damage kills a minion, puts a card back into your hand. Second Fiend Fire exhausts that and hits the Bronze Automaton again. I, I've seen that happen one time for the, <laughs> in like 7,000 hours. It is a stretch, yes. But it can happen. It's, it's pretty funny. All right, I think we're going here. And then to this elite. Yeah, that sounds right. Might as well take the upgrade first. Not sure I need to upgrade the other offering anymore. What the heck do I upgrade? Maybe I just sleep. Maybe that's the strat here. Now that we now that we have this much power, I think we need to increase our HP resource because we can use it constantly to draw cards. Offering draws three plus three plus one cards. Seven cards. So I guess I play Pummel first? I guess so. Fill my hand, please. Amazing. Simply absurd. So we can do cleave to do 16 to everybody. Headbutt the cleave. Play Necronomicurse. Draw the cleave. Put Necronomicurse back into our hand. Play the cleave plus again. Play violence. Play this cleave plus. That seems pretty good. Uh, although I guess we have to play Offering now if we want to. This would be lose 6 health, but then we can block 7 damage, so it's technically saving 1 hit point. Technically. Might as well, right? Oh man, Bloodletting is here, Demon Form is here. Demon Form might be the strength gain card we need. But bloodletting is very strong. That's a tough choice. Both of those are very good. Demon form means if we find Reaper from the boss, we're just like, we're there. We are there. Rupture would also work for strength gain. Hmm. The power to play the entire deck with the bloodletting. Yeah, that's the thing. And it gets us closer to doing sundial things, too. Bloodletting is for everything. I don't disagree. You know what? Let's take the bloodletting. I'm, I'm sufficiently convinced. Apparently we're still in the easy pool. Neat. All right, we just need to play Fiend Fire against this enemy. I'll play Offering. Cool, we're there. Lose six, gain six. I like it. These are all kind of whatever. Is this run seated? It is not. I swear to you, this run is not seated. We are just that lucky today. It's pretty crazy. Take it. Let's see. Regular fight up next. It's two pendib on eight. Regen potion's good. Flex is a thing. Flex is definitely a thing. 
Flex is definitely a thing. Yeah, even up unupgraded flex is a thing. Okay, let's take a flex here. Drink this, take this. Flex works with the ancient pot. There's more than that it can do as well. Also just block this, but I don't think we need to. So we can just kill them both on turn one. Easy. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Let's just offer him a start. Perfect. Seems good enough. Hm. One is plenty, though, I think. Uh, and I'm going to upgrade that flex. Although upgrading the bloodletting is also worth considering here. I think the flex upgrade is the more important thing at the moment. Do I just use this for force strength right now? That's probably a good way to get through this fight. Yeah, let's do that. Can we do any fun nonsense with the Necronomic Curse and the Blue Candle? Yes! We can, because we have Runic Cube, we can draw infinite cards at a cost of one health each. Well, we can draw 65 cards at a cost of one health each. Get double bashed in the face. Okay, here's where Battle Trance has been bad to us. Fair enough, fair enough. Hmm. That's fine. Give me the flex back. Oh no, what a bad draw. So yeah, so can I do any fun nonsense with the Necronomicurse? How about this? Bye. Even the game seems confused. Not the options I was looking for. Feed might be a, an interesting way to scale here, since we can trade health for things. What if we could gain max health so that we could have more health to trade? Bloffer, if we take the feed here, does that make this deck the Necronom Nom Nom curse? I think it might. I guess Barricade could maybe try to do something as well, but I don't really don't see what it would do. Do we have enough finesse to avoid outright killing before the feed? I think that we probably do. Would Tungsten Rod be the single best relic for this build? It might be one of the single worst, actually, as it would uh, turn off some of our interactions. If you prevent the damage to self from playing the curse card, then you also prevent the card draw from the runic cube. And you would also prevent strength gain from rupture, too. Ooh, I gotta do runic dome if I want energy. I guess runic dome is okay. Although it's going to make the Dark Shackles really difficult to make work. Ooh. How about Sacred Bark? We have our own energy. There's also Tiny House. Gives us some money, some max HP, and another card reward. Maybe this is the Sacred Bark.
Yeah, all of our card draw says energy on it, too. Exactly. So I'm not actually sure we need the Runic Dome. More than happy to uh, fail a, uh, give another shout out to our uh, clips form. We're currently in, in need for more clips uh, to post up on the YouTube channel, specifically of Slay the Spire. Uh, so you can submit your favorite moments on stream if you see something that's particularly wild, wacky, weird, or unusual to that link there in chat so that we have immortalized all of the stupidest moments on stream for posterity. It's good stuff. There's definitely going to be some fun ones from this run, so get them in there, please. I think you can view your own video's channel, Enrique K, to find clips created by you. I, I know somewhere in my Twitch dashboard I can view the clips I've created. Dome would definitely be the way to go here if we want to just ignore what the enemies are doing entirely. My only problem with that is the heart fight. I think I'm going to take the, the Sacred Bark here. I think I want more strong potions. Uh, particularly this regen potion is looking really good here. And I, I really need to be able to know which turn to play Dark Shackles. That's my main concern here. We have lots of ways to get energy currently. Self-forming clay would be amazing here. Rupture would be amazing here. Six whoopers with the 18 months. Thank you. Hmm. 999 gold could be a thing. Well, actually, it'd be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Hmm. It'd be pretty bad. And yes, believe it or not, this is unseated. I have lucked into this nonsense. It only took me seven months. Well, six, six and a half months. Hmm, what is my spiker solution? Hmm. It's certainly not to play fiend fire on them. Shoot, we are not good at this. Fifty-five regen is my spiker solution. Become the spiker. Eat the spiker. Okay, I've gotten all the basic cards in the draw pile. Well, no, there's plenty more actually. We also have fourteen block next turn, huh? Okay, I'm gonna dark shackles you so that I don't need to block that. Should probably get rid of these days. feed. Okay, we should focus on feeding on something here. Let's do 15. This does 21. 3 energy. Sounds like we have to eat this one. Headbutt here. Yikes. got the 14 block, though. It should be fine. I guess we could also use the Liquid Bronze here. Although, again, we'd have to rely on them to attack, and that's not going to happen. Note that the exhaust pile actually fills up with multiple copies of the Necronomicers, because of course it does. Fair enough. 
Bash gets played twice. Just strike one time. Eleven spikes. Gets worse. No. But the shrug. Kill it next turn. Okay, that should work. That should work. Don't worry about the health cost of this encounter. As long as we don't run into, run into double spikers again. That's really my only concern here. That was kind of... Kind of sad, but... It's fine. This does get played two times. I feel like it's good enough, though. I need to think maybe the demon form was more correct. Transform a card. Could actually transform a hard decay curse, although I don't think we want to do that. Let us transform, I suppose, a strike card. We want to keep Bash, because it's actually good with Necro. Strike into Reaper, I believe. Into Dropkick. Okay, okay, yeah. Strike into Dropkick. What's the play here? Do we need to use Question Card? We're going to lose health in almost every combat, so I'd rather not take that many of them, other than perhaps Elite Fights. I think we go this way. Like this Elite. Into quite a few Elites. Elites are pretty good here. Hello. Tempting to Battle Trance. We can actually headbutt the Defend in Battle Trance. I try to do this with as few health lost as possible. Which of course means killing it right now with the feed. See here, is drop kick, double bash, feed gonna kill? We can do 24 plus 7 plus 15. That's not even close. We need that flex or that offering. Obviously, fiend fire kills, but that won't do it. Hmm. Or we can try to get back to the feed. I guess that's also an option. Let's try that. We consider using one of our potions here. Use a lot of health to do this, though. Don't really like it that much. You know? Seems to be expensive. Hmm. Have we seen rupture? Not yet. Not yet. Take a bunch of forget the feed. I'm gonna forget the feed here. This is okay. I do think we want ways to gain strength, so I'll take spot weakness. Though I don't think it's the best way to gain strength. It doesn't matter that much. Hit what? Flex. Another Flex Plus. Whirlwind Plus is also pretty spicy. 
think we want the second flex. That's all the strength we need now. Let's take these two potions. There's Rupture. Certainly, we might want to consider that. We should also perhaps think about Ori here, allowing us to look at five additional cards, which might contain a Rupture, too. Let's look at the Ori first. With question card especially, this is 20 cards. Five times four. Yeah, we definitely want that. Feel no pain. Oh, here we go. True Grit Plus or another Bloodletting. True Grit Plus or a Limit Break. Reaper! Here we go. Oh my goodness, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening, Twitch Chat. I'm so excited. And another Bloodletting. Holy crap. The Ori of the Gods. Take the bloodletting. Sweater kittens with the five gifted subs. We still have to pilot at home, though. We, we, we still have to make this win. We have to be careful here. I think we go feel no pain. I'm honestly not sure we need a limit break. We're going to gain so much strength that I do not know that limit break will do anything. Which is crazy. Save money for Dolly's Mirror? Question mark? Got the Reaper, man. That's so exciting. I think we do want a True Grit. We need a block plan for the heart. And being able to exhaust down to being able to use the Sundial actually seems very powerful. I think I'm going to take second uh, True Grit over Limit Break here. Unsuspicious Banana, thanks for the four months. I will take your energy. Thank you. No, don't don't leave the shop yet. We need this card still. That one's pretty good, too. That one might also be good. Yeah, that seems pretty good, too. We have 39 cards in this deck. Two of them are Necronomikers. Currently. Two of them are currently Necronomikers. Go feel no pain. True grit here. I'm not sure I'm going to use the healing potion yet. This might be better in Nemesis. This is a reasonable time to consider the attack potion, though. Seems good. Yeah, that seems good. Here we go. Rupture. Let's do Dark Embrace as well. That actually might limit the number of cards I can do. Right, because the Necronomic Curse leaves my hand, actually. Hmm. Okay. We want to double Reaper and then feed next turn, if possible. So we have nine strength. It's actually quite reasonable then. That again, let's not though. What if I only draw attacks? I hadn't thought about that. Glad I don't have to. Reaper, go! All that juice, man. Look at it all. Delicious. Delicious. 
chomp. We're on top of things now. Double feed? Probably not, actually. Definitely don't want another spawn weakness. We want to upgrade a rupture is what we want. We also got a recall. What a wild journey this is. <laughs> Onwards and upwards. Let's go to another event, eh? I was hoping we'd find Mind Bloom. No, I'm not going to upgrade all my cards, nor will I take a Doubt Curse, but yes, we will fight a boss for a rare relic, which is obviously going to be the Champion Bell. What else could it be? I mean, really. Let's go Dark Embrace. Strike. You can hit me if you really want to. Pet Nib Reaper also a thing here. Pretty absurd. Pretty hecking absurd, man. We have enough here, right? Gotta take a little damage, though. Easy peasy. Calls him like I see him, Twitch chat. We are the champion now. Whenever we apply vulnerable, apply one week, as it is foretold. Good artifact potion, but I like the Dupot even more. As it is foretold. <laughs> it's the last unmastered relic indicated by that red outline there. Let's fight another elite. The Nemesis. Very suspicious. It's not quite enough damage, though. Hmm. Oh, now it is. <laughs> Alright, forget feeding, I'm just gonna kill you. Toxic Egg! Any skills we add from here on out are upgraded, like, oh, I don't know, Second Wind Plus? Click. That allows us to exhaust a lot of status or other cards in our hand, getting blocked for each and draw for each. Bottled Lightning would have been really nice on Offering Plus, but we have to take the blue key here. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, we're going two fires here. Two more elites. Maybe one more event. Can I kill the transient? Should I kill the transient? Sounds like yes to both, probably. I can draw back to a full hand after this too, right? So there's no downside to this, there's no downside to this. I can keep my turn going. Kill 
bit of. Yeah, literally disgusting. It's it's pretty broken what we can do here. I'm gonna try to really break it. That true grit back. Enough for this turn. No. Obviously we can do more. Wait a minute, that's illegal! Damn right it is. Um, this is fine, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I can't play Dark Embrace. I'm, hmm. Let's do this. Awkward. Awkward. Still three turns. We should be okay here. Finally, we can play that. So now we draw two cards. Fun dilemma. Yummy. Tasty. Mm. Ooh, this is good for heart. This is probably pretty broken, actually. Although I don't think we need it. Let's take a disarm here. Let's take a disarm here. I, I, <laughs> I've almost run out, of, run out of things to say with how uh, stupid this run has become. We have we have truly had the most lucky Ironclad run I think I could ever hope to have. And if anybody asks why we were still playing Ironclad, show them this run. And then show them the door. Okay, there's Fiend Fire. I might just go for the Fiend Fire kill. I think I can get feet down too. Hmm. Pretty happy just taking the kill here. This is a repto fight. Yeah, let's just do it. Heart of Iron was 12 metallicize. Oh my. I don't think I want Havoc. Can you believe this is a three energy deck? We have Runic Cube Sacred Bark right now. Guess we can lose this regen potion. Heart of Iron seems pretty good. Mob Bank isn't even that bad, actually. Especially with Career. Giant Head has an extra weakness to this deck. Excellent is even more powerful than normal, because the giant head has the slow effect. D-Money Lamau, thanks for the five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. 
Hope you enjoy the extra stupid nonsense occurring on stream right now. A lot of cards to delete, though. second wind is for. Do the thing now. It's good enough. Chomp. Ink bottle. Draw even more cards. That might not even be good. How do we feel about a second shockwave? Don't need it because we have the champ belt. We apply vulnerable, we also apply weak. Antwok with 14 months, we're the champ, even though the belt is still missing. What do you mean it's still missing? It's right here. It's right here. We are the champion, and will be forevermore. That's my belt! Alright, let's take one event. Tomb of Lord Red Mask, that's not it. Okay, I think we have what it takes here for the final gauntlet Twitch chat. I am really excited to upgrade Rupture. How do we def defeat Time Eater? Oh, pretty easily. Trust me, pretty easily. Will not be hard. You have Dark Embrace in play? Don't play Fiend Fire then, okay. Do not play Fiend Fire. I think that could be really bad. Yeah, don't play Fiend Fire. That could break the whole thing. Really, really bad. I repeat, do not play Fiend Fire. Do play Offering, though. Let's keep deleting cards. Uh, that's pretty good, too. Sure. How do I even make a YouTube thumbnail? Probably, I, could, I bet I could just get a all Necronomicurse exhaust pile. I think it was a pretty good one. <laughs> I don't know, man. Don't even know. All right, so we second wind here, we second wind here. There we go, rupture. Two strength whenever we take damage. We'd love to see it. Once again, don't play the Fiend Fire. Don't do it. Strength? I mean, it's kind of enough strength. Nah. He 
exhausting things. There's Reaper. Let's just Reaper. Interesting, it didn't play twice? Why not? Wasn't Bash on the previous turn? The Necro flashed there. GG, either way. Next up is Donu and Deka. Saved the cultist, even. I don't have things. We can feed fire here if we want to. That sounds pretty nice, actually. You can perish. Not sure I want that Dark Embrace in play right now. The perfect deck. You just second win this Garbaggio? I don't think I want that Dark Embrace. I already have the perfect card. Yummy donuts. In case you think I thought I was done, we're not done. Delicious. All right, we're on to Act 4. We have 104 hit points. We have two Necronomic Curses. We have the Necronomicon. We have a Runic Cube. We have double strength potions. We have a 41 card deck full of hot nonsense. Will this be the double Necronomic Curse run that honestly we weren't sure would ever happen? To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source? of this ridiculous curse pile. You ready your blade and bonk that heart for 2798. Have I been here before? And I owe the chat a dad joke for handsome Bigfoot. What is Bigfoot's favorite sport to play? Sasquatch. You're welcome. All right, we upgrade one of these bloodlettings for one more energy each time we see it. Good headbutt target, too. Even a good dupe potion target, perhaps. Rosina. Wait, Trip Mastery is here. Might as well, right? Get in here. We can do Trip and Frozen Eye, and I think Frozen Eye is going to be very strong. Got to make sure I don't trip up this run. Uh, what I am going to do is take, if I'm going to use Frozen Eye especially, let's see here, anything else we want? Double Strength Power Potion is pretty good. Although I think Dupe Pot Heart of Iron is probably better. Probably. In the interest of not tripping up this run, I am going to take a really quick bathroom break before we go into the final two fights here, just to make sure I've got my head on firmly to pilot this to success, because I'm not going to get another chance if I screw this up. So I will be right back.
Alrighty, Twitch chat, we are back. We are back. Uh, and I am excited. Frozen Eye with all this draw power is really quite absurd. It's going to let us do some very, very silly things. And set ourselves up really well for future turns. Got lots of health. I say we have a pretty solid block plan for hearts. Although the only weakness of this deck is that we have but one Reaper. I think one is all we're going to need here with 104 max HP. Alright, first up, the Spire Spear and Spire Shield. Take a quick look at the draw pile. So we see Rupture is right on top, right where it belongs. Perfect. So we can immediately begin to do nonsense here. Looks like we get them both very easily here. I see that we're going to get uh, Double Trip, Flex, Double Reaper. I think I can draw through all these cards. Easy. Might have to play the True Grid. Don't think it'll be a problem, though. It's the Nib to Eight. Keep that in mind. How many more cards do I need? Three more. That's not hard. Well, actually, yeah, that's not hard. Get rid of a strike here. Room in hand for several more draws. Get rid of that. Okay, so we can double Reaper if we want to here. I think I will. I have to give up Necronomic Curse. Not ready to do that. It's just double reaper. Do we need to set up the sundial? I don't really think so. Okay, those two are down. We have both our potions for the heart fight here. I don't think we want to take any more cards. Let's just upgrade Pummel Dropkick. So, we're here onto the heart fight. 107 hit points. If we can beat the heart, we will master the Necronomicurse, which I've said would be the most difficult card of this challenge, and I stand by that. Here goes, Twitch chat. Here goes. Oh, that's a turn one, if ever I've seen one. Turn one rupture. That's pretty good. Early disarm, too. Also very good. Feeling very comfortable here. Where is Reaper? Where is Reaper? Here. Okay, that's a good spot for it. We don't want it too early or too late. I guess my only question is, do we dupe? Rupture. Probably, right? Seems like the quickest and easiest way to win this fight. Four strength per hit point loss. Although we have to beware the beat of death. Where's feel no pain? That's another important question. Pretty far down. Hmm. That would also be a good dupe target, right? Hmm. I think we're fine now. I'll dupe the Rupture here. Our first two cards get duped, so the Rupture and the second card I play. Which I guess will be Shrug It Off, probably. Since I draw so many cards. Definitely want to play some self damage here. Trying to figure out how much 
Second wind on turn one. I guess we could headbutt it. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, I could headbutt it. Easy. Just delete all this garbage. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I lost the Necronomic Curse there. Whoops. It's fine. So better do some damage then. Would have liked to deal more damage this turn. It's a good start, though. Like this. Okay. Um, that should be good enough. Let's see here. Oh, the block prevents me from drawing. That's an interesting problem. taking any damage next turn. We want to take this so that we can heal it back with Reaper. I think that means I just headbutt the Necronomicurse, actually. You heard me, headbutt Necronomicurse. Yeah, that sounds right. Draw many bonus cards. Let's see, we get rid of Shockwave. Dark Embrace coming up. Do I actually need it? Not sure. We want to get to this bloodletting. Let's start by triggering the burn, actually. We can just do that. So we have four energy here. I want to play... Assuming bloodletting. I want to play probably double reaper and feel no pain. On this turn. Feel no pain first. Oh, shoot. That's right. Okay, there's another one, though. It's fine. Feel no pain, bloodletting. Do the damage cap with strike here. Feels pretty good. Although we should strike first for repeat of death reasons. This is already damage cap. We don't need to play the flex. see things in draw order again. We're going to double fiend fire next turn is what we're going to do, and that should be pretty decisive. So let's go double bash here. Keep that weak and vulna up, thanks to the champ belt. The champ belt helping out, and you love to see it. Play the Dark Embrace this time. Next turn, double fiend fire. We'll destroy our feed. Don't worry about it. Excellent. Nice 
block. Hot diggity. It's happening, Twitch chat. Necronomic curse mastered. GG. Holy heck, what a run. What a legendary run. GG. G freaking G. What an all. My goodness. Anonymous, thank you so much for five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, folks. Fluffy Mittens with five gifted subs. Thank you as well. Steve with a B with five gifted subs. I think I saw some bits in there. Broken Buzzer with a thousand bits. Getting in under the buzzer. Shrieking Eels with 16 months of the Prime Sub. What a crazy, crazy run. Not a seeded run. Truly a random occurrence that we managed to win with not one, but two Necronomicurses. Back-to-back -back Necronomicon Dolly's Mirror. That is just the streamer luck, as it were. Uh, I held for a long time this was the biggest obstacle to completing the Slay the Spire Mastery Challenge. And I am so thrilled that it is now off the list. And we're down to the final 20 cards. Holy heck. Helmshank with five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, folks. Holy heck. Or sorry, 10 gifted subs. Happy Buddha with a lot of waffles being thrown around. Okarama with a tier one sub. Storm with five gifted subs. Thank you, Storm. Dazed Lurker with 40 months lurking no more. But definitely in a daze after that run. Holy, holy, holy heck. I think that deserves a moment. Can I do a... Is there a command for that? Create. Into the cozy sub club. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't play, don't play my own thing at me. I'll let the mod do that. Philly already did one? All right, sweet. Good. Very good. The double moment. And the ridiculous hype train. What a crazy run. Cursed to win, I guess. GG. And a heckin' impressive score at the end, too. Let's take a look at some of the uh, the relic stats here. Dang. Now, what has it been done? Necronomic curse has been mastered. And so... Shall I... <laughs> Why can't I hold all these Necronomicurses? That was great. What a ridiculous run. Statman with 100 bits. Look at that. Necronomicurse times two. Champion belt. Double trip. All in the same run. Now that's... That's proper timing for the belt. chi 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 so had I required only a single copy of each card, I think this moment would be the, the end of the Slay the Spire Mastery Challenge. We would have accomplished everything at this point. However, I'm more than happy to seek down the remaining 20. We still have to master Trip, and, or not Trip, um, Pain, and Clumsy, and a few others. But dang, what progress. Kalahard with a 10 gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. Yeah, exactly, Abigailis. The Necro wasn't even there to, just to annoy us. It was actually helping a lot by enabling us to draw a ton of cards. Final credit to Runic Cube is 191 cards drawn, three and a half cards per turn since picking it up. That's ludicrous. Just ludicrous. Man, what an, what an orrery. We used the blue candle 128 times. Man, that was really something. I think Clumsy will be difficult. Faley says the next rare relics were Dead Branch, Tungsten Rod, and Charon's Ashes, respectively. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sakoti with 100 bits. Jam Jam with a gifted sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Triple Sin Twitch. Scart with a few bits in there, too. Heck yeah. That's right. We no longer need to run Ironclad if we don't want to. Ironclad is the first character to be completely done. 
We will probably still continue to master uh, to play Ironclad in part because uh, the pain mastery run is probably going to look very similar to this one did, to how this one did. So we might be able to uh, to get a similar victory. Publius Maximus, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. I don't think I expected to master Ironclad first, but I am not surprised. Not surprised at all. Truly amazing run. Uh, see, this is a once in a spire career time type of run. You really, you really don't get this combination very often. Blue Candle Necronomicers doing something, let alone being able to duplicate the curse and then using the curse to good effect. And Kalahard with another 10 gifted subs. Holy moly. This hype train don't stop. Y'all too kind, man. Which was Watcher cards have not been mastered. So there's now 20 unmastered cards. Silent has Heel Hook and Unload. There's Heel Hook. Is there anything other than Unload in the rares? We got Grand Finale done. No, it's just Unload, huh? Heel Hook, Unload? I'm not surprised those are the last two Silent cards. No, I'm not surprised at all that those are the last two. Those are some of my least favorite cards. Defect has double energy. We still didn't get Hello World or Scrape or Overclock. That poor Defect run. If only that had ro if only that had won, we'd be really close to the end here. Missing Reboot, Scrape, Overclock, Hello World on Defect. And Watcher is missing... Conjure Blade, Judgment. Is that it? Just, just the rare cards? Looks like we got every uncommon done. Yeah, just Judgment and Conjure Blades. So no, there's not much left at all. And we're going to start picking up the unmastered cards with extreme prejudice at this point, now that many of the tough ones are gone. J. James, thanks for four months. And Steph Soror with another generous 10 gifted subs, keeping that sub train going almost to level six there. Holy heck. Sith Lord Waffles with 500 bits. Oh my goodness. What a time. To be a streamer on Twitch. Uh, colorless cards and curses. We have a few more of those. Let's see. I think there's three or four curses left. Clumsy, decay, and pain. Oh, and shame. Clumsy, decay, pain, shame. I think shame and decay won't be that bad. Pain and clumsy will be tricky. Pain because having two pains in the deck will hurt a lot. Clumsy, it's just actually quite difficult to get two of this curse. We have to take random curses. Um, so to get these mastered, we're going to have to take more curses from Niao. Minyo with a hundred bits. GG to ya. In the colorless pile, that's where most of the unmastered cards are these days, actually. Enlightenment and Swift Strike of the Uncommons. We just got tripped on. For the rare cards, we still need Chrysalis, Shockingly Master Strategy. Thinking ahead, transmutation, and violence. So we have one, two, three, four, five of the rare colorless cards remain. I think transmutation is probably the hardest card that's left. Might even be harder than double pain. Stone Swan, thanks for the thousand bits. Cheers. Cheers. There's a chance to transform the curse into a different curse. I guess that's true, Kiran, but it's pretty pretty slim odds. And uh, carrying that curse around lowers the chance that the run succeeds. Shoot, shoot, everybody! What a uh, what a crazy show of support that was. Dang. Was not expecting that uh, that start to our stream today. Chemex Transmutation is a very fun combo. I'm hoping we get uh, that combo at some point. Well, uh, I don't know what we could possibly follow that run up with, but let's try. Let's do a silent run here on Ascension 20. Obtain a curse. Survey says yes, right? Our uh, act boss is Hexaghost. 
Hexy Hexy. I was going to joke about ending the stream there. I, it's pretty hard to top it, right? <laughs> Just quit while I'm ahead. Just an injury. Seems fine. Curse start into Jawworm definitely can be ugly for silence. Looks like a pretty good turn one draw, though. I'm not scared here. Do want to make sure we're not skipping strikes, though. We have to take the little bits of chip damage here, or this fight could get really ugly. Three strikes. Next turn, three strikes. Good enough. Nine plus nine equals 18, and wow. If we so and, and that's why. If we had shorted ourselves one strike earlier in this fight, we'd be unavoidably taking 12 here. But because we played all of those strikes, we get to kill here. That's why you gotta stay aggressive. Especially if you have a, an, a useless card in the deck during your early combats. Blade Dance versus Poison Stab versus Dagger Spray. I'm pretty happy with a Blade Dance, especially when we have so much money, because we can purchase relics that interact with that Blade Dance well. Was I glad that I went with the Bloodletting versus the Demon Form, asks Chat in that previous run. Yeah, even if we hadn't gotten the Rupture, I think I would have been pretty happy with Bloodletting. If we didn't get the the infinite strength, we could have used the Sundial. If we lasted a few more turns in combat, we could have used the Sundial to be our win condition by just playing True Grit on Necronomicurse over and over again and getting energy off the, the Sundial. So we had some backup strats available. Uh, okay, I'll just block three times. It's not the turn one you want to see. Help! Oh no, not the turn two either. This is not too bad. Go strike, shiv, 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 neutralize, survivor. And then, yeah. Well, that's what you get for having a curse. And that's why the early curses get removed, if they're unmastered, if they're already mastered. Because we cannot tolerate draws like that over and over again. Do I warm up for streams? Nope. Sure don't. Well laid plans versus all out attack. If I want to fight an early elite, that'd be all out attack, but I don't think we get away with that. I'm going to take a well laid plans. This card is too good. He's been warming up for 30 years. Double injury. There we go. Injury curse mastered again. All right, shop, what do you got? I'm rich. And huh. you have a boat thingy and a phantasmal killer. And a transmutation, huh? I don't have enough money for boat thingy. Transmutation. Bummer. Hmm. Could do card remove transmutation. I did say extreme prejudice. That's true, didn't I? Really bad for <laughs> for spending 200 gold on, for the most part. Sometimes it can do good things. I guess we could afford card remove, phantasmal, transmutation. Let's do it. Surely this won't be the worst thing ever. <laughs> can always start a new run, right? Grand of Greed. Um, hello? Guess we're just gonna YOLO, or we're just gonna retain... No, we're gonna retain Survivor is what we're gonna do. That's what we do. Go. Newt, Survivor. Play this, play this. Keep this. Perfect. What do you got? Wow. 
That's uh, that's quite the card to add to the draw pile, actually. It's pretty cool. Ooh, Gamba or Extreme Prejudice? Now, I've already got a Transmutation. Give me a Calculated Gamble so I don't lose. Not that extreme, you know? Okay, Moderate Prejudice. Moderate prejudice. Hmm. What do you got? Easy money. Boop. Jawworm angry. And Kalahard, thank you so much for the insanely generous 25 gifted subs. As the previous bombardments weren't enough, welcome, welcome, one and all, to the heckin' cozy sub club. Amazing. I don't have a. I do have a real blade dance. Heck yeah. Give me an accuracy. Now we're talking accuracy, blade dance, phantasmal killer. That's the beginning of something very special. Next turn is not going to be nice, is it? That's not too bad. What do you got? The bomb! That will prevent this thief from fleeing. Perfect, actually. Where's my smoke bomb? Oh, it's right here, sir! Boop. Got him. Could have had double heel hook. But why would I want to? That's the important question. How about a piercing whale? How's it going, Tub Sass? You better believe it happened. It heckin' happened. Grab the wrong bomb. <laughs> Not that bomb. Wrong lever! Um, thinking about upgrading Phantasmal, actually. Let's do that. Energy's hard to come by. What is the transmutation upgrade? Yes, upgraded cards created. Is what transmutation does when upgraded. I'm not gonna take a Dreamcatcher today. Not today. Let's do event then, Gremlin Knob. Oh. Oh. All right. Seems fine. Seems more than fine, actually. This is our only play dance. It's not good. That is not good. Gamble, I guess. Okay, at least I did get the two strikes. Perfect, then. We can do this. Pretty good block, but we should definitely play this. Take the ten.
What do you got? Oh. Oh. Good job, transmutation. Very good job. Blam. Kunai. GG. Every time we play three attacks in one turn, gain a point of dexterity. And I'm half tempted to take Skewer just because of the Chemical X synergy. We don't even have a Chem X, but it, it's good reason to pick one up. It's also a half decent attack in its own right. Good with Phantasmal Killer. Not bad with Kunai. Don't need two Piercing Whales this early. How do we feel about Acro? Acro's okay. We need another attack. Let's let's take this. <laughs> Not sure it'll be amazing, but it definitely definitely has potential here. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, why well, have one apotheosis when you could have two? One to upgrade the other. Easy. And Hex Dragon, thanks for uh, 27 months if I didn't catch you there. So much ridiculous support today. I'm down for a dagger throw. We need more stuff. Although, this is not the most synergistic stuff. We'd much prefer another blade dance. I'll wait, I'll wait. I'll wait. Why do I feel like we've been in this fight before? Hmm. We can go neutralize here, skewer here, take nine. That's not too bad. It was a red lice last time. Ah, I see. Yeah, we could gamble, try to get piercing well, but I don't see it going particularly well. Let's just do this. Gambit to try to get Phantasmal. That's worthwhile. That should be the only damage we take. Because Transmutation has our back. Seems good to me. Even better. First Adrenaline, the power. Then bullet time. Then cry. Then win. 16 damage shoots. Come on, Blade Dance. That's basically a Blade Dance. I'll take it. Storm of Blade Dance. More cards we can get into our hand, the more shivs that makes. And I'm desperate enough that I like it. Ooh, hello. Tasmal Will Aid Plans Transmute for two? We want a Power Potion here. Probably Hexaghost is a better Power Potion. We can Ancient Pot the Vulnerable here. Let's go, well-laid plans, transmutation, keep the blade dance. Ooh. Eh. Panic button's cute, but I don't have room in hand to keep it. This actually could be a bit of a problem here. Gonna have to neutralize blade dance and storm of steel. And without accuracy, I'm not sure it will be enough. Yeah, we only do like 24 more. Hmm. It's concerning. Perhaps I needed to power potion turn one. This is only 16 though. No, we can just survive this. Question is, can we kill next turn? I can only do 21 damage next turn. So even if I double strike here, we're not killing next turn. That says we need the power potion. Caltrops barely help. Is that just enough? Is that just enough? 
Let's do some quick maths here. If I piercing whale the Kremlin knob, we go to three strength. This is a base attack value of, I want to say 18, 16. So 16 goes to 19. 19 times 0.75 is, let me guess, exactly 13. 14. Okay, so piercing well alone will not keep us alive. What about defend alone? Defend will send the gremlin knob to... 9 strength. 16 plus 9 is 25 times 0.75. Is... 18 damage, so we should actually live with one defend. So we can go defend, strike, strike this turn. Do 12 damage, bring the gremlin knob to 22. Do 3 damage with Caltrops, kill with Skewer next turn. Okay, there we go. Remember, the defend is blocking for seven, not for five. So we're okay here. Thanks, Caltrops. Thanks, Kunai. Kunai GG, as they say. Easy. Wasn't even close. Man, we're still not that good at Hexaghost, huh? Hmm. Problems. Wonder if I can beat Hexaghost having uh, retained two. Is choke any good here? Not really. I'm actually not sure we beat Hexaghost. Kind of worried here. Transmutation will have to carry. Transmutation could do it. Could upgrade the transmutation, but I'm gonna upgrade well laid plans. We hope here. This is gonna be tough. At least we have a block potion. Let's see, Storm of Steel is two dexterity, turn one. That's a pretty good start. Or I can gamble to try to get the stuff in play. I'm gonna gamble here. Yeah, that's better, here we go. Phantasmal, accuracy, transmutation, creates a mayhem, here we go. Mayhem will save us. Oh, 42 damage for free off of the mayhem. Immediate payoff. want this damage doubled. Let's wait a moment then. Nice. Do this. Nice. Keep neutralized survivor. Might even get to keep the block potion here. I don't see a problem. Where's the problem? No problem here, officer. No problem at all. Keep that defense. Wow, I can't believe we top deck Skewer with the Mayhem three times. GG. Good job, Transmutation. What luck. There's an Unload, a Doppelganger, or a Storm of Steel. It's actually kind of a cool Doppelganger. We're about to find Dead Branch, and Storm of Steel will secretly be the best card. Extreme, they say. Yeah, that's true. There is an unload here. It's it's really bad, though. It's really bad.
I like the doppelmoor. 14 DPS for one mana. Yeah, and then discard all of your block cards that you were going to retain. Spend one mana, lose the fight, is what it is. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, already got the blue key. Let's take a uh, curse key then. We can skip all the relics from here on out. Runic Dome is not that good when you've got Piercing Whale type stuff going on. And in general, I don't think that good with X cost stuff. Velvet Choker completely shuts off the Kunai, so let's take Curse Key here. Hello? Apparently, the shops are canceled. Hmm. Trouble. Much trouble. Oh dear. Are we ever in trouble here? We just rely on transmutation? I think we do. Discover... F knees, I guess. Bummer. Block potion it is, then. We can still gamble for the neutralize, too. Got it. Okay, that's not too bad. Keep these. Having more energy is definitely nice. Call. This is the turn. Now we're never. These are six. 24 damage shivs. This should be enough, yeah? Easy. Okay, that was not actually that bad. Whale Palouse. Yes. Still want more shift cards. Still not finding the shift cards. And kill the grounded one. Or I could skewer for four. Kill the flying one. Take three. I don't want to take three. Too bad. I'm taking more than three. Bummer. Yeah, I should have hit the middle one. Why did I ever think that I could get out of this fight without losing a lot of health is beyond me, but here we are. Hopefully we get a random shop or something. Or something. Ooh, good potion. Deflect is kind of nice with Kunai. We need the card draw, though. We'd rather have a backflip at this time. This is not a shop. This is a fight. And a nasty one at that. Like, I probably need to shiv potion. God, this is already bad. Bah. Grab him. Bear. This is even worse. All right, Transmutation, what do you got? 
Hand of Greed. No, nope, that's not it. That is not it. Ow. Caw. This helps a little bit. Oh, and so does this. Obtain the Bloody Idol, healing us 5 HP whenever we gain gold. Okay. Okay, we might be able to hang in there just a little bit longer. Just a little bit. I think we're going to go this way. For better or for worse here. This looks like a pretty good fight. Good turn one, too. All right. I feel okay here. Life is acceptable for the moment. Stinky. Let the shivening begin. Let's go for it. Beautiful. A little bit of healing. Dodge and roll plus with kunai. That's pretty good. Six block this turn, six block next turn. We're gonna sleep for a bit more health. 34 HP into this elite. Can we do it versus the Book of Stabbing? I like to think that we can. Good fight for the Dex Potion, for sure. Might also use the Flex Potion. We can buy new potions after this. Yeah, where's the draw at? We had so much draw last run, but it's gone now. Gonna dodge and roll gamble, I think, here. Good. Keep you weak for next turn, I guess. Vortex is pretty good. Double mayhem. You love to see it. All right. Transmutation hard at work here. No well laid plans, apparently. Don't worry about that. Just double mayhem all the way. All right, this is it. This is the big turn. The one that's for all the marbles here. Oh ho. Marbles obtained. Ninja Scroll gives us three shivs and therefore a point of dexterity on turn one. Set up with an upgrade is not it, but I think uh, escape plan is. Draw one if it's a skill, gain lots of block. Action Rizo with three full years. Thank you so much for the incredible showing of support. All right, that was not too bad of an elite fight. You can heal 13 or choose one of 20 cards to add to this deck. I say give me card draw. Backflip, acrobatics, adrenaline. There's backflip, unload. Get the heck out of here, unload. Here for backflip. And we're not going to open this. Don't like that part. I guess we could. We can remove, but I mean, I have five strikes and five defends, so rather do that. We can go to shop in one more elite too. Perfect. Let's do that. Y 
do need a plus. Needed a plus yesterday. There's a card remove. Minus one strike. I hate that I'm thinking about this. <laughs> Infinite Blades. Uh, Ori is here, that's true. Thinking Ahead is also here. I don't really like this orrery that much. No, I'm kind of down for the 183 gold war cry. Gotta get it somehow, right? Or we can give colorless cards with prismatic shard. Yes, with prismatic shard it could. I feel like I have to lose a defend card. I will take this. I hate it. But I will do it. I don't like it. Ooh, that's good. I guess just keep this stuff, huh? Hey, where's the mayhem? Excellent. Wait. I want to double damage this turn? I don't. That's not excellent then. Alright, finish you off. If that's how it's going to be. Uh, uncomfortable, but tolerable. Do of healing. Freaking chosen, man. Why you gotta be so chosen? Ooh, Cultist Potion. That's an easy way to win champ fight. Good. So all we have to do is get through this elite. That shouldn't be too hard. Happy to use Flex Potion here, Cultist Potion here. Should be no problem. Uh, looks like a pretty good Flex Potion. We can definitely kill the bat guy on turn one with the Flex Bot here. I can play Piercing Whale, Phantasmal Killer as well. Sounds good. Dodge roll with all that decks? Yeah, we've already got one though. And the one we have is upgraded, so I didn't feel like it was a good idea to add another unupgraded one. No thanks. Three, huh? Let's do this. Okay. Go accuracy block. Very good turn one. Pretty good turn two. Shame we're one off here if I try to backflip. Probably still do it. Shouldn't have. Should not have. Should have just killed him. Taking the damage. It's all good though. Sure. 
One shiv per turn. That'll teach him. Good. Tiny chest. Or I shouldn't have picked that up, actually. That's fine. We just won't go to four question mark rooms in uh, the fourth act. Cloak and Dagger is a shiv generating card. That'll do. That will do. Nightmare could have done some cool things as well, but it's a bit setup heavy for what we're able to accomplish at the moment. I want more shivs, please. Yeah, Nightmare Accuracy, for example, although Nightmare Accuracy really not that helpful if you don't have very many shivs to begin with, which is the current problem. We're a bit short on them. Although less so, as we get further and further into this run. And Kaka. Strength per turn, please. Quick Slash is good. Free Unload is fun. Not going to use the Master Strategy yet. Not yet. Get that too. What laid plans would be nice. Hello? What laid plans are you there? Our strength build so that our attacks do more and more and more. Once we have a critical mass of strength and attacks in hand, kind of like this, then we should be able to unleash a torrent of pain upon the champion. Get him. Let's tank some damage here. Really get him. Thanks to the Cultist Potion, that wasn't too bad. Wraithform is here. That would have been nice with Nightmare. I don't like Wraithform that much with the Kunai, but it's got some utility. And I think we need the help, so I'm going to grab it here. Hmm. These are all kind of bad. Bummer. I guess Fusion Hammer? I don't like it. Can't upgrade Wraith Form, can't upgrade Blade Dance, but at least we have Willade Plans upgraded. I don't think Busted Crown is a good idea. Let's take the Hammer. With no potions, I'm, I'm never taking Sacred Bark there. Alright, tell me how I'm forced to go to four question mark rooms. One, two, three... Nope, we can go to three. Cool. Good. Let it be so. We even get a nice start of Act Heal here. Not a bad path overall. Don't have great feelings about this run, but we'll see what we can do. We'll see. Bonk. 
Nine card transmutation. Any anyone? No. Smoke bomb is here. Third piercing whale. Two is usually enough. Two is usually enough. Acrobatics and Reflex, another Accuracy. Okay, these are things I can work with. Acrobatics in particular is very good. Reflex is not terrible. Let's go Accuracy, Acrobatics. Acro is better than card remove, surely. Yeah, I think it is. That's all I can afford, okay. Onwards and upwards. Did we not remove a single card? We have uh, two removes. We're down one strike, one defend. Feels like we're a standard starting deck because Silent has too many cards for some stupid reason. Just keep our emergency buttons in hand here. Five energy is actually pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Easy money. Simply call at them. And they can do nothing. This is nine. Yeah, funny. This and this. gonna kill you yet. Let's keep these for the double damage. Plus ultra double damage. Easy money. Do I think Silent should have less starter cards? Yeah, I think so. I have never particularly felt like her starting deck was all that fair compared to the other characters. She does seem like she starts off on a back foot, in a way, at least on A20. Lower Ascensions, she seems okay. Plus. I have full HP, you say. That's a pretty good upgrade all. I'm in the mood for it. Upgrade all of my cards. Give me now no longer heal, but everything in the deck saith plus. Both acros are upgraded, the wraith form gets upgraded. All the block cards are upgraded, the transmutation's now upgraded. That's good. And we gain 222 gold from Don. The Red Mask. Good old Don. Excellent. I feel pretty comfortable now. Means we don't really have a lot to do at rest sites, but... As ever, that's a problem for future Baylor. Not for me. We also have a smoke bomb. As a nice, like, don't lose health insurance policy. We're only free this turn, right? Oh, ho, ho. Guess I'll gamble. Those bombs won't uh, won't work the right way, unfortunately. Jeez, man. Hmm. 
So we have 12 additional damage on each shiv. They are 16 apiece. That shouldn't be a kill. Although I can skewer first. Looks like I have to block here. Right, 16 times 7 is how much? 112, yeah. <laughs> 112? 112. Fair enough. All right, let's, uh, let's not. Every freaking time, man. Really want to keep the block cards, though. I guess let's keep Storm of Steel Defend. Try that. I don't want to get donked here. There we go. Bombs would have killed? No, the bombs would have gone off while the nemesis was intangible. They would have done one damage each. In order for bomb to go off when nemesis is able to be damaged, you have to play them while the nemesis is able to be damaged. Oh, but yes, because we're one damage off from lethal. Okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> oh. You're right, Twishat. My max health. All right. 62 out of 62. I have nothing to do. A yeah, Regal Pillow. <laughs> Regal Pillow Fusion Hammer Synergy, obviously. All right, Giant Head. Prepare to be Giant Dead. damage shoes. Uh-oh. Block pot. Block pot. Make it so. Double panache. The mayhem. Mayhem discards our whole hand for shivs. Easy. Actually, I discard my whole hand for shivs. Sneko Skull. If we apply poison, apply one more. Not useful currently. Transient. Pretty easy fight. Hmm. Oh. Yes, you become vulnerable. Secret weapon, secret technique. Let's secret technique for Doppel. Draw one more next turn. adding so much more card draw to this deck has really helped it out. Beautiful. Forty-eight damage shivs. Get him.
How are today's runs treating me? Well, uh, outstanding is the only way I could possibly describe what happened at our previous run. Ludicrous. <laughs> you almost killed Transient, by the way. 480 damage that turn. Unupgraded Cloak and Dagger. Hmm, more expertise. I'm gonna take one more Cloak and Dagger, actually. Ooh, hello. To be 16 each. Is that enough? 15, 16? Yes, just barely. This and this. Can't smoke bomb out of this fight. This is the one fight we can't leave, so we need to make sure we do well here. Looking pretty good so far. 32 damage shift. Come on, Storm of Steel. Easy peasy. Bajra, there's a point of strength. One point of strength. And another gamble. I'll take it. Lilac Frappuccino says, How would I change inf Infinite Blades to be a better card? I've always thought that Infinite Blades and Accuracy should maybe be the same card. Like... Bring accuracy back down to its old value of add three to five damage to shivs, but also give you one shiv per turn. So as you play more of them, you get more shivs per turn and they each deal more damage. You could upgrade it to make it uh, two shivs per turn, but that creates hand size problems pretty quick. So it's not necessarily a better thing. Could make it create a shiv as soon as you play it, that would help too. Just in faster shift generation that way. This fight could be bad. I'm more than willing to use the smoke bomb if necessary here. We have to block for 18 plus 12, 30 block total. Got it done. Clean. Blade Dance. Or another Phantasmal. I'll take one more Blade Dance. We should be mostly done with the deck now. Mostly. Yeah, we upgraded it into the Blades. I realize now I did not mean to do that. Good stuff. Second well laid plans plus. Why don't I use Minty Spire, even though I recommend it often? I like to go for a, a less modded visual style. The, the more different the game is from vanilla Spire, the more general confusion there will be amongst viewers. The more likely people are to bounce immediately upon entering the stream because the game is not what they recognize. And the more likely they are to incessantly ask questions about what the mods are. For these reasons, I don't like to use Minty Spire. Sleep. All right, I was planning on upgrading some of those cards. We have Fusion Hammer. Well, never mind. Maybe I shouldn't have taken that uh, Cloak and Dagger then. Probably not. Oh well, here we are. Kill some birds time. 
Minty Spire is a quality of life mod. Has things like automatic relic reminders. Hmm. Looks like we might take a little bit of damage turn one here, unless Transmutation wants to bail us out. I'm going to keep the Piercing Whale. Let's go defend Transmutation. Take nine, potentially. Yes, take nine. That's okay. We can take damage. It is allowed. But we can never get that health back. It's true. So Bomb goes off next turn, right? That's right. Kill the bird next turn. Easy. Easy peasy. Shivs do 34. That should be actually quite doable, in fact. Might even be able to do bomb storm of steel. I like it. Question is, can we block on this turn? I don't know about that. Oh. I totally can. Good. Don't mind if I do. Sure glad we have that wraith form. Okay, we took a minor hit from the first boss. What about the second one? It's Donu and Dekka, no time eater, thankfully. Ooh, no block on turn one, though, either, meaning we're looking at a full 24 to the face, unless Transmutation can save us. Spooky. Let's do Blade Dance Transmutation. Smoke Bomb! Yeah. Hmm. First. From a secret weapon, violence don't help me with that. Bummer. So we do take 24 here. There's really nothing I can do about it. Draw all the strikes, I guess. Ouch!
Okay, keep going here. Good. Control has been retained. First dodger roll. Well, I should have played dance first there. This is fine. Yarnavac with five months. Appreciate you. Heck yeah. Okay, though. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this dexterity? You deal two, two, three, four, proving your ability to count to the heart. Stride on to act four. No cards currently queued to be mastered here. There are two rare colorless cards we could see in the store. Uh, but we're going to have to contend with Act 4 at half health here. I don't think we have great odds, quite frankly. But we have decent enough odds. We also didn't get any of the cards we wanted. So whether we succeed or fail here doesn't matter too much beyond the simple joy of it. Mummy Hand's okay. Mummy Hand is definitely okay here. Let's do Mummy Hand. Clockwork Souvenir might have been smart. Not getting murdered on turn one might have been smart. Hmm. Well, that's a slight problem. I guess use the gamba right now. That's a bit better. Was the upgrade all a mistake? Potentially. Certainly there is the potential for it. I'm actually not convinced that it was. Yeah, not so far, that's right. We, we dominated Act 3 because of all these upgrades. Really helped a lot, actually. Shivs in there, perfect. For example, we were able to perfect this fight, which is a pretty good sign. Axes with a strike plus. We get Aura Calcum and a Poison Potion. And one more Calculated Gamble plus. Will this be enough to stop the heart? I am not sure, actually. Uh, 
Uh-oh. Double Piercing Whale turn one is definitely not good. That's good. Shoot. Um, don't like that. No, I do not like that one bit here. So accuracy transmutation. Okay. I think we're pretty hosed here. We got double well laid plans turn one, we might have had a good chance. As it stands, unless we now get Wraith Form immediately, we're dead. Oh, we got Wraith Form immediately. Okay, hold on. Cool. Gonna be losing one dexterity per turn, but the kunai can stop that. Hmm. Although it's better this turn. No, let's just do this. Skewer. That's right, we can retain four. Although, in that case, we didn't want to, mind you. Oh shit, I know. Uh... That's right, it has artifacts. Welp. Dead. GG. GG, my Twitch chat. We meet ignominious defeat. Pretty good run, though. Pretty good run, showing off where Mark of the Bloom can occasionally be good. Don't trust the number on this, by the way. This this ticked up the healing prevented stat a bunch of times while we were at full health. So it's absolutely lying to us about how much healing was prevented. Don't trust it. Don't interpret it either. It's a liar. It's fake news, exactly. Poison Potion could have stripped an artifact and saved us. Oh my goodness, you're right. It's true, actually. Yeah, we could, could have, should have done it. Could have, could have, should have, would have done that, but didn't. How much longer on the stream? Usually we go for six to seven hours, so we've got another three or so. Which I think is going to involve a lot of potato, actually. Really happy with the two runs we did. The silent run getting to the end is pretty cool, but Ironclad mastering the most difficult card of the challenge. I'm very happy with today's progress. Bro to toe. That's right. How long ago were the runs I'm posting on YouTube? Usually about a one to two month backlog for the YouTube runs. Hmm. 
Usually. Three or four weeks currently, says Faley. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Another big thank you to everybody who's supported during today's stream so far. The sub count has been ludicrous. Thanks to that Necronomicon mastery. Seriously, what the heck? So, I'm going to take a quick break here, refill the legs, stretch the water. When I return to a chat, I'm going to play some taters. Some bro taters. Why do I think Defect has the most cards unmastered? I think Defect has lost the most runs so far. That's the, the really short answer there. Defect has had the lowest win rate at the challenge. Actually, that's not true. Apparently, Silent? No, no, I just played more defect runs total. Yeah, more defect losses than uh, than anybody else. Although we've had less successful silent runs than defect runs, it looks like. Interesting. Crazy to think we're almost done with the challenge, having only had 136 total successes this ru this year. It's pretty crazy. Did we win uh, Danger Five Fisherman? Not yet. I'm I'm still figuring it out how to how to fisherman. It seems like such a crazy hard character. Just gotta get the hang of it. All right, Twitch chat back in a few minutes. When I return, Brotato time. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Yeah, wasn't this an amazing run? I, I still can't believe our first run today, the Cloud Run. Truly legendary. Some pretty intense rain happening outside right now. When is this going on the tube? ASAP, pretty much. It's going to be one of the best, that's for sure. One of the luckiest runs Darman has ever seen. Uh, it's one of the luckiest runs I've ever had. And to think it, it started with picking cleave twice. Never don't take double cleave, I guess. Amazing. But as we return here, I am switching games. I want to play my favorite wave-based alien shoot 'em up as a potato game, Brotato. So welcome one and all back to Brotato. In this game, you play one of 44 different potatoes each of whom have a special gimmick of sorts. And the idea is to select weapons, items, and stat-ups to create a build and survive 20 waves of non-stop aliens. It's a very mechanically simple, kind of visually simple game too, but it's very, very addicting and replayable. I want to start with a sick run. Let's get sick crossed off. Sick has a lot of lifesteal, but takes damage every second. Slingshot and SMG are both pretty good. I want to do a guns run. Let's play a SMG start here as Sick. So, lifesteal 25 means we have a 25% chance to gain one health when hitting an opponent. Pretty good with a fast attacking weapon like the SMG. And I think with our large starting bonus to max health and lifesteal, we're allowed to build very uh, DPS heavy. Have I played any of the Pathfinder games? No, Yardavac. Although I do have um, Pathfinder Kingmaker, I think, on my PC at the moment. Let's take a range damage up. Pistol is a weak gun, but still a gun. Notably, it's a cheap gun, which can be valuable. I'm just going to reroll here. Laser gun or shredder. I want SMGs and shotguns. There's a shotgun. And with negative HP regen, this character really benefits from a broken mouth. Five max health up for effectively no downside. You love it. Am I going to play Baldur's Gate 3? I will be playing it, but I don't know that I will be streaming it. Uh, especially on release day, there's going to be a lot of competition for uh, viewers streaming Baldur's Gate 3. You know, everybody in the shadow of Co-Carnage, for example. So I don't feel the need to stream it, uh, certainly not on release. It's going to be performance issue and bug heavy, despite the early access period, I'm sure. <clears throat> Let's grab 30 range. I like it. I like it a lot. Ooh, ugly Tooth is good. But yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be playing it. I, I could see later in the game's life doing stuff like on-stream challenge runs, maybe. If I find it really enjoyable, but... Um, a really long narrative experience I don't think actually makes good stream content for this stream. Have I played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2? To death. Yeah, lots. Lots of those games. Perhaps more than I have any right to. Hmm. More guns, you say?
What does destroying the trees accomplish? Trees drop materials. So you get more money, more experience. Uh, and they also drop a health pickup when destroyed. Bullet. Double turret bullet. I think attack speed is a very good stat on this character because the faster you attack, the more you can use your lifesteal. Hand. I guess two more lifesteal is probably good. Although we want to get up to six weapons pretty soon here. Well, that's what I think. Uh, yeah, no, Prophet Kane, uh, any uh, bugs are, are likely going to be in the content that's not currently available in the early access portion of the game. Obviously, the stuff that's been playtested to death will be relatively free, but you add new content, it's not going to be clean. Ooh, nine speed up, sure. No, let's go armor over crit. I don't think crit helps me that much. Let's have a small army of turrets, I guess. Do I want a revolver? I think I want SMGs and shotguns is what I want. I don't see why I should have to settle for anything else. SMG only has one and a half X crit. Uh, shotties are double crit though. can build crit with guns, it's just not usually that good. Blippity-blappity. Three range damage. Here we go. Full deeps build. Got three elites on this run. Hoping we can get them all. Hmm, boulder hat could be quite good. That's a very early boulder hat. 15 luck, 18 harvesting. Sure. Range up's good. Or er, uh, experience up is also good. <clears throat> the hedgehog uh, overpriced for just range damage or just melee damage unless you can get both stats it's just too much money to spend on the small setup although the uh, hp regen downside is negated that's true sure i'll take a bit more max health take the boulder hat take the scar take the reroll here how do we feel about the sharp bullet? We get extra pierce, but our pierces are less valuable. I think we do want it. I think I do want it. Lost Duck's also an okay way to get some luck. Let's take that too. Yeah, I, I've really been liking the plant item. I think it's a very cheap way to get to good regen stat. Minus lifesteal is a pretty big penalty, admittedly, but 
If you're willing to commit to no lifesteal, it's very effective. No. Another attack speed up would be good. Maybe we can get that for level 15. Either uh, free range damage or 15 attack speed. Level 10, excuse me. Do the Pierce Duke bullets have a separate role for lifesteal? Good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know, actually. Mutation, another way to get range damage, but I don't like the speed down much. Scope, I'm willing to take. Double barrel shotty, too, I'm willing to take. Yeah, I think uh, Hedgehog is about twice the price it should be for one range damage. I'm not willing to buy that. Not when I can get 2 range damage, 25 range for not that much more. Any tips for one-armed? We did one-armed with a hatchet on stream. Whatever your weapon is, you'll want it to be a weapon that can hit a lot of enemies at the same time. I recommend a melee weapon and a lot of the range stat to be able to hit many enemies with one swing. Slingshot can also work pretty well for one-armed, although you have to get up to purple tier very quickly or you're going to lose. Really good wave. Two more range damage? Sure. Nine max health, not bad. I want to go more glass cannon, though. Let's take two more range damage and ten more attack speed. And attack speed and range. Baby with a beard. A bullet dealing 12 damage is fired from enemies when they die. Perfect. That's going to get extra blabby now. Hmm. I played Wildermyth. No. Can't say that I have. Alright, we're keeping up the murder pretty well. Let's take another speed up. Do need some of that before this first elite wave. I don't know if we have enough damage to kill this elite. Let's add a bait. No, let's lock. Let's just reroll. Killing a tree spawns a turret. Sure. Handcuffs. Not bad. That's eight range damage. I'm going to go ahead and lock that. And the acid, too. Buy the acid, then buy the handcuffs. Ooh, be careful. 
All right, killing that elite is off the menu. It's fine. We can kill everything else. It takes so much damage output to kill an elite. It's pretty impressive. Very hard to kill the wave 11 elite. engineering, sure. More attack speed, definitely. Let's take acid handcuffs. Does picking items up from item crates increase inflation? No, the only thing that increases inflation, Private Dream, is the wave count. Doesn't matter how many items you have. Strange book worth it because of the handcuffs. Didn't think about that actually. It was a decent engineering up. We have um, five elemental damage. I don't think so. Blappy. Hmm. There we are. Okay, I'll take some armor. Really do want more uh, damage, though. Damage, please. Tardigrade, not so good on this character, unfortunately. Since we're taking one damage per second, it just negates the first damage tick. Here we go, a purple SMG and a metal plate. Perfect. Gonna be geared up for the next elite. I like it. Ten more attack speed, let's do it. And 12% damage, which will be multiplicative with all of our other damage ups. Hmm. Good. Very good. Add more pierce. Those pierces actually won't be that good because of the sharp bullets, but I still like it. Maybe wanted to grab the 20 luck from that shitty potion. I was just <clears throat> mostly looking for uh, stuff that would help me kill the elite on this wave, specifically. I guess we'll grab the metal here. Oh, hello, friend. Okay, not bad. Nice to not have to deal with mummies at the same time as that elite. There we go. Now we've got the damage.
Diploma. 10 Engineering. It's going to make these turrets a lot stronger. Sure. One more range damage and better recycling. That's all good. That's all good. Yes. Not too late for fertilizer, actually. Another Tyler. One more. Eh. I played potato with a gamepad. Xbox controller. Smizzler with a six months in the prime sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Looks like we need more range next. <laughs> Five life steal, 10% more enemies, you know what? Sure. And Sif's Relic. Instantly attract all materials that are dropped. Sure as well. Give me more attack speed and more percent damage, please. Strange Book is back. <clears throat> so it's five engineering for minus one ranged. I don't think that's worth it. I really don't think that's worth it. Hmm. Better guns are worth it. Bean Teacher's a bit late, but I think actually is still worth it, too. Should be able to get us to level 25. Have I tried manual aiming? Only very briefly. I, I didn't like it very much does seem like it has some use in a couple situations, but it, to me, feels like fundamentally changing the genre of the game I'm playing. So I don't want to do it. Is this among my top 10 potato-based games? This is definitely up there with Farming Simulator. No. More damage, please. More shotguns, please. Ooh. <laughs> Pumpkin's excellent, too. Improve our piercing damage. times. Why do you pick up boxes? They give you items. Why not pick up boxes? Ooh. Excellent. I'll take that, and that, and that. 
Perfect. J-Man with the Prime Sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Thank you. luck 10 elemental damage but minus five engineering i'll just recycle that give me three more base range damage give me my speed back let's re-roll here reduce the attack cooldown of your structures by half of our attack speed nice that makes the turrets quite a bit better See if we can get level 25 this wave. Wisdom, five damage every five seconds till the end of the wave. Perfect for the boss wave. Totally perfect for the boss wave. Uh, when were we roll? Oh, geez. Okay, just give me the speed up then. And here I would like either attack speed or range damage. There's attack speed. Or range, actually. No, take the attack speed. And take glass cannon. And missile. And glasses. Focus would have been nice. Okay, so going into wave 20, we have 27 range damage, 104% attack speed, 36% damage. So the red SMG does 39 per shot. Double barrel shotgun is 49 times 6, piercing 5. Go wave 20. Do more damage when standing still, but I do want to continue to avoid enemy attacks here, so we gotta move out around a fair bit. Blapped. We unlock the whetstone, big lifesteal item. Very helpful. And one more character is crossed off the unlock list. Excellent. A lot of the difficult characters still remain here. Let's <clears throat> let's try Jack again. Jack does bonus damage to bosses and elites but has less enemies with more health and more damage. So far, Jack has proven troublesome. I'm gonna try a Jousting Lance run here. I think when in doubt, Lance is a very good weapon. Uh, 
Have I tried fisherman spears? We have. I have not been able to be successful with that yet. I'll take the attack speed up, actually. Lances and knives would be interesting. Hmm, you know what? Let's try that. Manual aiming is an easy win for fishermen. Yeah, that's why I continue to feel like manual aim is cheating. I'm going to hold that stance, even though it's ridiculous. Manual aim is cheating. There, I said it. Dodge up. Two wins on fishermen with spiky shields. Interesting. We shouldn't take harvesting up, but I'm going to. Twice. Three times. Easy. Easy peasy. Going for super early speed on fishermen helps. That's what I've I've been feeling, is that you need like 10 to 15 speed ASAP. Or your toast. can't take another harvesting up. We gotta start taking DPS ups like attack speed. I don't think I want a ghost axe. Spear two? No. This is dodge and harvesting. I'll take that actually. Despite the small damage down. Take a plant as well. It's one knife. Trying, okay? Ten more attack speed then. And nine more move speed. Move speed scales the damage of the lances. So it is quite good here.
wins, notably by a flat amount. So it's uh, proportionally more effective on shorter range weapons. Range only applies half the flat value to melee weapons, but don't be dissuaded. It's still very valuable on melee weapons, because the longer the reach on the melee weapon, the more enemies it can hit at the same time. Let's take three armor. Take three armor. Cool. Just go up to a red knife here? I think so. 59% chance to do quad damage. Whoops, what did I just buy? The Blood Leech, that's fine. Actually think that healing will be good, so whatever. Yeah, 15 attack speed and another medical turret. That I very much like. Take a plant. Claw tree's good. Coffee's good. Tree item is okay on Jack. Sure. Good wave, good wave. Sure, I keep taking these. I really like, appreciate the dodge in particular. Less so the harvesting. Nine max, good. How are we doing on range? 39? I'd like to be about 100 range, but 39's a good start. Keep rolling here. Even less enemies? I don't think so. Little frog is minus dodge. <clears throat> Third medical turret. You know what? Heck it. Nice. And I'll take a weird ghost, because I think we can survive it. Next wave should be our first elite wave. Let's 
Let's grab some more move speed. 30% move speed should be plenty here. I don't think we're going to kill the elite. Not this one. Ooh, improved tools reduces the attack cooldown of our structures by a significant amount. Based on our attack speed stat. Our structures meaning our medical turrets now heal us faster. Probably not worth taking engineering. We have to get to 20 engineering before the medical turret benefits at all. Won't take a regular turret either. But I'll take more speed and one Cyclops Worm. That kind of undoes our range gains, but means we're doing pretty good damage. Oh, it's you. One of the nastiest elites there is. A lot of move speed is definitely going to be helpful here. So we can stay out of the dagger range of this thing. We also have pretty good speed, pretty good dodge, and great healing. So I'm not worried here. Killing the elites as Jack is very difficult. You get bonus damage versus them, but they also have huge health. So, not really going to work. Are you spawning less enemies because I'm Jack? That's kind of cool, actually. Just run in a circle. When in doubt, circles are good. Great wave. Yeah, because we have the, the improved tools item, attack speed will also improve our turrets. Normally, turrets do not get your attack speed. Sure, take an alien worm. Three armor will help us survive. Garden um, actually gives you more fruit because of the improved tools. It's kind of cool. Let's take a gentle alien. I don't think I need that garden. I have four medical turrets. This is not the weapons array I wanted, but here we are. Look how fast they are. The healing. Definitely not able to kill everything. That's all right. Take a range up. Okay, this is nonsense. These weapon colors are nonsense. All right, fine. Sad tomato. Definitely pretty good. Slow down the elites is good. Crit chance is good. Can't pick up this dagger because we have blue, purple, red of two different weapons. Interesting.
20 luck. Sure. Mouse gives way more enemies, which could be a good thing. I don't think we can kill them all, honestly, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take Mouse here. Don't trust it. Wheat seems okay. Snail seems good. Putting in good work here. Dear. Oh, that's too many bullets. Okay. No, don't run into those. Oof. Okay, that was tough. That was tough. I want more attack speed is what I want. That's clearly our biggest weakness. Definitely not anything else. Definitely not. Never really got the crit chance these knives deserve. If there's still time. Probably going to build tanky from here on out, though. So we can survive the final boss wave. God, I've unleashed the horde. <laughs> Fair enough. I tapped that bullet on the edge there and it was just enough to kill us. GG. This is a pretty promising uh, jack run. But we weren't able to keep up with the damage requirements of the later run, uh, waves. That was not uh, not working out too well. Is there a max level? No. There's a max wave though. 20. Alright, let's give uh, Fisherman another go, I suppose. I still have some hope that there might be a guns build on Fisherman that can work, but I'm not sure what it looks like. Let's try... Let's try Spear again. As far as character levels go, you can definitely go to at least level 100. Yeah, I need that early max health on this character. Looks like move speed's probably going to be the way to go. Somebody said spiky shield was good. I don't believe them. Coffee is good. Lock that. Lock that too. I'm going to try four baits wave one. This might be short, but I think we can do it with this much health. Just got to get tapped not too many times. That's not how you do it. Oh, that is how you do it. Okay, cool. Easy. Easy peasy. I think attack speed might be one of the most important things on this character. That and uh, healing, actually. Let's go... No, let's do three here.
speed. Very important. What are crit chance is good? I think insanity is worth it here. Surely insanity is worth it. The problem I have with Fisherman, then, is uh, the more baits you have, the more bait enemies spawn during the actual waves. And once we reach a certain critical mass of baits, it feels like we're unable to deal with the ones that are spawning mid-wave, and I get killed by those. That I'm not sure what to do about. I think attack speed is a big part of the uh, solution, though. So let's take attack speed. Just stop at around 25? That might be smart. There, there might be an upper limit to the baits that I, I'm failing, failing to respect. Could certainly see that being the case. are good. Let's do one more. might be perhaps better to just get to the critical mass of baits early so you can take advantage of the harvesting scaling and then go from there. Take a speed up here. Finally. Med turret sounds really good. Yeah, a little bit of health regen or healing in general goes a long way to... You're going to take damage during the initial part of the wave. It's almost inevitable. So having a way to get your health back after that occurs, very helpful. I'll take a free helmet. Sure. Ooh, 40 harvesting. Here we go. Okay, that means we can slow down the bait acquisition. Definitely. I think one hatchet's not a bad inclusion.
15 attack speed. That's the stat we want. And I'm feeling some range, actually. Definitely feeling some range. Dodge might be okay. I think I want to go to about 200% damage. Let's try something like that. Still nope. Glasses are good though. We want range and we continue to want more attack speed. Attack speed up to 100% at minimum. Let's pick up range too. So what the hatchets do is, what anything that gets close to us while the spears are on cooldown, the hatchets will kill. I think the, one of the big problems I have with six spears is that you throw all your spears at something and then something else comes into close range and hits you. But with these two hatchets, we can kill anything that gets past the spears, which I kind of like. You can see them repeatedly hitting the bait enemies as they charge us. We'll do a damage comparison too at the end of the wave. That that purple hatchet's doing quite well. Excuse you all. No. Okay. Spooky. So, spears are doing about 5,000, 4,000, 3,000 for the white hatchet, 4,000 for the purple. So, on par with the spears, actually. Not bad. 12 dodge? I'll take 12 dodge. That's a lot of dodge. Vigilante ring's not a big deal. We have so much percent damage already. Spear 3, here we go. Twelve. I don't think Pocket Factory is that good. Go wave eleven. Speed sounds very helpful. Red Spear. All right, we're at 201% damage. I am officially done taking bait for now. We have 172 harvesting. 
less enemies. You know what? Actually, white flank sounds kind of good. Don't trust wheelbarrow. Chopper four is a lot of damage. Eh. Let's go wave 12. Should be pretty cozy from here on out. If we don't take too many more baits, we won't see too many more special enemies. And our damage stat is already plenty good for the rest of the game. It actually does feel quite comfortable. move speed. Crit chance. Really like some uh, defense, but if you have to offer me crit, I guess I have to take it. That is the law. One more roll here. Blah. Three rolls, man. Barry, here we go. That's excellent regen. Improved tools for the med turret, also quite good. Gonna fall for your stinky minus armor scheme game. Give me the dodge. Power generator is probably worth it. How much does the game cost? I wanna save like 10 bucks. Not much. Can medical turret miss you? I don't think so. No, I don't think it's possible to evade the projectile, no matter how fast you're going. Five dollars, even cheaper. That's a pretty good price for the Tater Town. Very, very addicting. I mean, you can easily get 100 hours out of this game, just completing all the characters one time.
definitely would like some armor. That's not armor. Neither is max health, but it's still good. Oops. That's fine. Speed is the best stat. Well, no. Melee damage is the best stat. They're all the best stat, really, if you think about it. Don't think about it. Eh, sure. Ooh, it's a dodge up. I'll take it. I meant to check the weapon damages. It's currently counting the current way I've got it. You're so late. It's healing. Max health. Still lacking armor. Tardigrade. I see you've brought a knife to a spear fight. Big mistake. Maybe with a beard not so helpful. Mammoth plus 20 melee damage. Oh my. So let's let's compare. Red Hatchet does 191. Red Spirit is 224. 280, 248. Dang. This is some big ups. Heal when you dodge. I like it. Another hatchet, actually. These hatchets are pretty good. So about that armor stat. Cool. 
definitely the furthest I've ever gotten a fisherman run, so I'm quite happy. Stopping the bait acquisition seems like it was a smart play. Although I'm sure you get a uh, very wacky run if you just keep buying as many as you can. Pretty hectic, I bet. Dodge actually sounds really good. Armor and max HP. Sure. Go wave 20. I was going to ask, do the special enemies not spawn on wave 20? But there they are. GG, there's our fisherman win. I'll take it. So I think the secret really is stop around 25 or so of the bait item. And you will have an easier time. Attack speed, very important stat. Crit chance worked out pretty well, too, here. GG. Hook, line, and sinker. That's right. That's right. I'm going to mark that one. Okay. Only a handful of taters left. Let's do the brawler. Brawler's a nice, fun punch in one. That's right. We ended that with 27 bait. Punch character gets bonus attack speed with an uh, with unarmed weapons and a dodge bonus but has really short attack range which you may want to fix you don't have to you can go really short attack range brawler if you want to for extra fast punches of fury but i like making my punches go further farther Ghost Axe. Ghost Axe Brawler. Sure, actually. Kind of dig that. be hard for the axe to get any kills, though. Hmm. Yes, more range is less attack speed for melee. Thing is, it's not very much, though. You're talking like a 5% difference for 100 range. It's not, it's not worth even thinking about. And yes, because you hit more enemies per swing, you're actually gaining damage output. You also get to begin your attack faster. Because you can begin the attack when the enemy is further away from you. So you'll you'll start attacking more quickly, which also has a bearing on your damage output. So really, really don't, don't worry about the attack speed down from range. Range is very good on melee, plain and simple. Keeps you a lot safer, too. Having to get up uh, to knife range with some of the scarier enemies can be uh, quite a prospect.
Punched him. Punching damage. Sure. And let's start getting range. Minus range. He's ready to pick a fight. Yeah, I, I think your playstyle does does depend. There's there's definitely a time and a place for low range melee builds. I've heard good things about them actually, so uh, I'll believe. But I I am a range monkey. The more I play the game, the more I like range as a stat quite a lot. Speaking of, let's grab 30 more here. Hey, here we go. Yeah, Cheesy Bob a fan of the low range melee builds? I can believe it. Especially if the character is extra tanky somehow. Wouldn't recommend low range ghost though, for example. Have we gained any percent damage? Not yet. Zero, zero. Okay, well, that'll change. There we go, there's one. are really taking all the kills. I'm not surprised. More range. And more range. Here we go. We're now at 57 range stat. It's an expensive 10 attack speed on improved tools. I don't think that's worth it here. perk. Zero, zero, 002. Okay, these axes are not, uh, they're not cutting it. Let's just say that. Six HP is okay. Level seven is a guaranteed purple perk. Am I okay with dodge or would I like attack speed or range or melee damage? I'd really like melee damage actually. I'll take move speed. There's melee damage. Buy all that.
I find this wave a lot safer as a melee character with range. These chargers are pretty hard to get near, but uh, range makes it much easier to swipe them as they charge by for substantial damage. Especially while you're also trying to dodge the bullets at the same time. Ow. Armor sounds good. More range? Till we have about 200, I'll keep taking range. Tractor? I like it, actually. Yeah, some weapons in the shop would be nice, so that we don't have to use blue and white tier items anymore. Uh, higher tier fists in particular do a lot more damage, so I'd really like to get them upgraded further. We're failing here because they're not dying in one hit. <laughs> Help! Okay, eh, it was an okay wave. I shouldn't take the harvesting, but I'm going to. Survive a weird ghost. Mastery, here we go. Some better damage. 35, 33. Okay, that should be enough for now. Yeah, a tractor anytime before the first half of the game is going to be very good payoff, I find. The damage down can, can hurt, definitely, but it's so much money. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, don't recommend the ghost axes, is what I learned there. Gonna take a quick break before we jump in.
Alrighty, Twitch chat, we are back. Thanks for hanging out. We'll like grab a quick snack there. Uh, let's see. Let's try Cryptid. With the Cryptid, more trees spawn, and you get materials and XP for every living tree at the end of the wave. But you can't life steal. You have very short range, and enemies drop less stuff. I've heard the pro strat is actually just to go pacifist cryptid. Let's try it here with the hand start on danger five. Why kill the enemies when you can simply farm materials without needing to? And let's take uh, Harvestings. Harvesting, dodge, armor, HP regen. That sort of stuff. Not Taser. Hands only, please. Hmm. Pruner. I'll take a Pruner. Okay, that gets us to quite a bit of harvesting early. Decrypted like Brawler going ham with fists to get the dodge bonus while having a very small range to not endanger the trees. I could see that. I could see that being quite good. Just gonna try to win this run with whatever is handy. Yeah, more harvesting, please. Speed sounds good. So we're already at 54 harvesting. That's a, a good start for sure. Question is, what do we take from here? Ugly tooth, I suppose. I don't really feel the need to upgrade the hands or the <clears throat> or the pruner that much. I declare that we dodge. Let's do some dodging. Trees die in one hit. No way. Give me a third coupon. Luck sounds good too, I guess. <clears throat> Although mostly we want uh, max HP and survivability ups.
Could upgrade the pruner. I don't really want to. Piggy bank. Now we're talking. Go. Hmm. This part might be bad. We could potentially switch off the hands now, but I think we can probably just keep these to the rest of the run, for the most part. That's right, we're taking the hands-on approach. Poor tree. Give me more. Sad tomato. Have more regen, start waves at half health. Sounds good to me. This character has a higher dodge cap than others. 70%. My favorite cryptid? I think I'd have to say the cold Mamadakwa. Would be my favorite. Hmm, I'll take two regen, sure. Ooh, wandering bot. Excellent. Jackalope. This is Dodge. Padding's interesting. I'm going to lock that, actually.
Okay. Again, very few stats we do want. Move speed's one of them, though. Hmm. Cool. Oh, sad tomato's gonna be bad, though. Hmm. Oh, well. So how does this character even work? This is the cryptid. You get materials and experience for every tree that's alive and regeneration for every tree that's alive. So you're not supposed to kill the trees. And you get more attack speed when you dodge, which is kind of cool. This character wants to dodge a lot of attacks too. Although I don't think we'll be doing much with that, an elite wave, Cupid, one more. No, okay. Yeah, the minus 100 range is pretty bad. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. We have a problem. Oh, they're despawning, though. Easy. The enemy limit really seems like it makes this not too bad. There's only a certain number of enemies that can be on screen at the same time. As new ones spawn in, the old ones despawn. No problem. There we go. Padding number two. Okay, perfect. It's more pacifist pacifist. Pacifist that doesn't even want to kill the trees. That's right. Extra pacifist. The ultra pacifist. And we've also gotten ourselves into a situation where we don't want to buy items. So we've effectively created a character that doesn't want to play potato. Don't kill anything, don't buy anything, just ignore everything. Yeah, the ultimate leave me alone build. Wow. Mostly laughing, summoning the second wandering bot for me. Thank you. Uh, do I take another alien worm? I think we do. The pickups don't seem like they're worth it anymore. Hand four. Cute.
I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Would rather just sleep in build. Why are we not upgrading the hands? Because um, upgrading the hands costs more money than you get in harvesting from the hand upgrade. They don't do better damage or better knockback or anything like that, so there's no other purpose really to an upgrade. We just want five of them for the, uh, the base dodge and harvesting. No, I'm not giving signatures, please. Excuse me. I'm coming through. More trees, yes. <clears throat> Nuclear launcher? What? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> it's an interesting option, actually. Pivot to nuke, slate game. Burn the forest down. Definitely going to be hard to keep the forest alive with a nuke launcher. Tempted by the alien eyes, actually. Let's take that. I'm going to be scaling a lot of max HP. Our pacifist creeds are backed by nuclear weapons. Just sit in the corner with a nuke launcher? Actually, not not a terrible suggestion. Just corner camp with a nuke launcher. Easy. Adrenaline is awesome. Could go pocket factory, full betrayal. I just sit in the corner anyway. Don't talk to me. No soliciting. No, that's not good enough. I understand. Yeah, I can't even see me in there. That's funny. So the overall strategy is just uh, just survive through all 20 waves using the cryptid's passive income. Not worrying about killing things, just staying alive. Easy peasy. Are they despawning if there's too many? Yes. I think about 100 enemies could be on screen at the same time.
<laughs> Easy. Easy peasy. More healing. More trees. This is eight regen. I don't think I want it though. Infinite regen. Add more knockback, actually. Let's do it. Probably have to actually avoid the elite, though. Armor. Armor again. Probably not. Alien magic looks good, though. We have 208 max HP. Excellent. This actually kind of works because there's a limit to how many enemies can stack on top of each other. Note that the, the big charger guys can't even get to me because of the, the mass of smaller enemies in the way. Max HP is one of the worst stats at this time. dodge. More trees. More armor. We have 15 armor. That means we take half damage. Good enough. Let's go wave 20. live over here now. And that's how you crypted, I guess. <laughs> GG. GG. <laughs>
So if you haven't tried to, um, the hand start on Cryptid, I guess I recommend it, uh, so you can be handed a win. Philly Eagle says, I totally did not think Cryptid could go pacifist. Well, glad to prove everyone wrong there, or at least you. Uh, it's definitely viable. Definitely viable. How much healing did the adrenaline do? 300. So, uh, it might have been, might have been the difference between full health and dead. Hey, Spellcaster, I had an amazing time with that Necro run earlier today. Thank you. All right, who's next? I didn't even know Cryptid could win. I want to try uh, Jack again. Feeling Gun Jack. Let's go Revolver. Let's go Revolver. Revolver on Jack. Jack has less enemies with more HP and more concerningly uh, bonus damage, which is definitely a tough part. This character also only faces elites. No Horde Waves. Max HP seems pretty important on this character. Don't think I want a shotgun. We want, we want revolvers and laser guns, I think. Speed is good, though. There's a laser gun. One more. You look stressed out there, sir. Too much coffee? That poor onion. Mm. Feel the Eagle says, I've seen some folks have the opinion that uh, Jack's best stat is added enemies. I would broadly agree because each added enemy is so many more materials. So you can gain lots of money and levels by, by doing that early on Jack. Let's just go, uh, yeah, speaking of, here's Gentle Alien. 5% more enemies. That's going to be really good. As long as we can kill them. You have, to, you have to actually kill the additional enemies, so easier said than done.
gun upgrades here. Oh, excellent. Yeah, purple revolver. That should be good. Okay, so we have to get those uh, extra aliens. Anytime you pick up a material, you also gain one XP. Materials and XP are the same thing, for the most part. Uh, when you're picking them up off the ground, anyway. Items that give uh, materials are different, though. Got them both. Good. Very good. Wow, we almost made it to level 10 on wave 6. That's great. I guess I'll take a bag. Free range damage? This is the run. This is the run. Let's take 12% damage as well. This is definitely the run. Maybe I should have taken the luck up there. Maybe. Ooh, piggy bank. Okay. Very good wave. Less enemies, no way. We like our enemies where they are. Staring down the staring down the barrel of our guns. I'll take a little armor here. Haven't felt the need to reroll much. Wow, revolver three. Hmm. Fairy's pretty good as well. I'll buy that too. Let's go triple revolver. Instead of Revolver 4 here. And I guess I'll take a Gummy Berserker if I have a fairy. Who needs Luxstat, am I right? Really good wave. Truly amazing wave. Uh, one more roll. Two range damage, there we go. And let's get some more move speed. Which we are thoroughly lacking at the moment. We're also mix missing uh, max HP and armor, I think. Substantially. Just gonna buy all the white items I don't have because each one of them is one regen. Now we have 21 HP regen, that seems pretty good. I have piggy bank, don't forget. I did forget about that. <laughs> okay, go wave nine. Indeed, what about piggy bank? One must remember they have it.
Another very good wave. Crit chance could be a thing to build. Actually, yes. And I'm going to take 9 max L. Okay, use the piggy bank. Try to stay around 500 materials at the start of each wave. That way we get 100 bonus materials per wave. I think we have this one yet. 26 HP reg regen, good. 27 HP regen. I'd like attack speed, but higher tier than that. 20 luck? I'll take 20 luck. That's a lot of luck. Minigun. Hmm. I usually don't think of the minigun as that good of a weapon. Kind of cool here, though. I don't think I actually want it. I do want the small mag, for sure. Padding is cute. Take a weird ghost and go. We're at minus five dodge. I don't think I'll take this. Four range damage. Okay, we're going to try to kill the elite, I guess. Ten speed. Yes, please. Tardigrade. Very good. Take one propeller hat. Wings! Even more speed. So we have 35 move speed. I love it. Get another laser gun. And one more reroll here. Hunting trophy, huh? Okay, this should be quite good. Uh, if this can't kill the elite, I'd be shocked. That's you. Terrifying. Thankfully, we're very fast. Don't run this part. Ooh, careful. Nope. I failed there. GG. 30 HP regen was not enough. Uh, I think we had him dead there if I just kept dodging, but... Uh, as ever, every time that elite shows up on the same wave as mummies, I die. And there's nothing I, I have figured out that I can do about it. 
I'm gonna try the, the same build again here. We're gonna do uh, an exact rerun. I, I think as long as I don't get that elite plus mummies on wave 12, I'm probably fine. I don't think that one had anything to do with Jackie, so Nade, er, again, every time I face that elite on that wave, I've died. So I don't think Jack had anything to do with it. Ooh, med gun, that's good. More range damage. Add crit. Yes, add crit. Full glass cannon. Easy.
Hmm. I need speed. I should probably take attack speed. Attack speed or move speed? I'll take 12%. It's fine. Minigun is back. Don't think I want it. Lens good, though. Second medical turret. I like it. Not that many waves left for the elite, though. some armor as much as I would like to take other things we have 11 elite huh we get one shot by that thing damage. No, I need the 9 move speed to stay alive. Or else. Whetstone's pretty good. Whetstone Ritual gives us pretty decent lifesteal. Some weapons would be good, though. Come on. Not a believer in the luck stat. Not on this run. Tax speed, though. Yes. Yes, definitely. Pumpkin also. I want my life steal for now. There we go. Can we survive the elite? That's the question. 
Okay, not the stinky one this time. See how much easier this is than last time? Like, night and day difference. A little careful here. Oh, dear. Whoa, no. Easy. Easy peasy. Chasers are harder than the Elite, that's true. Well, need is a strong word. I want more damage. Better guns are more damage in their own way. That too. One more sounds good. Another elite next wave. Are we going to be ready? I'm not sure. I did that to myself. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. My bad. Entirely my bad. All right, let's do, I guess, an engineer run. Build isn't a huge part of the character, more so than actually dodging. Hmm, feels about right on uh, Jack. Why does Engineer get hammer? Come on, that should be obvious. It's a hammer. Any plans on playing Viewfinder? No.
I think the value of the Hammer Novax is the incredibly high base damage, such that, such that you can do over 100 damage with a hammer without any investment in the melee damage stat. Just needs attack speed and percent damage. That said, I haven't tried it much either, so I don't know. Speed's good for dodging, so is dodge. Dodge is definitely good for dodging. We do have an elite first. Okay. Duly noted. I think I want more enemies. I'm not gonna take a screwdriver. I will lock a purple wrench though. Seems good. Can actually have a surprisingly early red wrench here. For the explosive shots. Double purple for a bit. Four engineering. Pocket factory, here we go. Exciting. How's it going, neck neck? Things are indeed well. How many shots can the piercing? How many enemies can the piercing turret hit with one shot? Looks like at least five. Pretty good. Pierce three, okay, so it can hit four enemies. Got it. Eh, sure. Yes, engineering up. 
And chance for doubled materials. All quite good. This is also an engineering up, but it's a dodge down. Let's not. Don't want bag either. Cool. Free lure. Interesting. We need speed. And engineering. Ooh, and an explosion damage up right as I upgrade to explosive turret. 92 damage in an area. You got it. Wow, we've gotten really good luck on the wrenches so far. Tons of wrenches. Bring on the horde. Both loot aliens, excellent. Three crates this way. Very good wave. Sure, I'll take range and attack speed. We don't need lifesteal anyway. An extra turret is wonderful. And regen is wonderful. So is enough move speed to actually dodge elites here. Silver Bullet, bonus damage against elites and bosses. That does apply to turrets, so I'm going to pick that up here. Let's go with a bunch of flame turrets here. Another explosion damage up. And a medical turret. Excellent. Stay out of my base. He's mine. I don't think wrenches track the, the damage done by their attached turret, but I'm oh, not sure. Apparently I was way more glass cannon than I realized. And I was reading chat there. Three armor? I guess 21 max health, huh? Huh. Interesting. Alright, I'm gonna take a quick bathroom break and then we'll do one final run. Twitch chat. BRB.
Alrighty. I want to win with at least one more potato today. And I want it to be Jack. I do. Let's try Knife Jack. Knives can do very high damage to single targets. As long as you can get as long as you can get them to crit, which may be easier said than done sometimes. Wow, that tree. Don't go thief daggers though. Scissors maybe not the worst idea. I think Shuriken is the worst idea though. There we go. When he goes knife build, it's Jack the Ripper. Not incorrect.
four melee damage. Here we go. Gonna need some move speed now. Range. Range will help a lot next wave because it is very hard to get close to those enemies without getting completely slaughtered. Let's go one purple knife. One more range. Yeah. Okay, not too bad. not fast enough yet. We want crit chance. No, we want move speed here. Eh, crit chance is okay, though. speed. Can't dodge things. Nine max health, yes. Nine dodge? Can't rely on that. We need move speed. There's move speed. Nine move speed. Perfect. Very good. I'm gonna roll. No, I'm gonna lock that. That's too good. Okay, elite next wave. Pretty spooky, but I think we have enough health to maybe live. The knives are starting to work out, although we'd love an attack speed up soon.
Uh, I want that regen. I want move speed or something. Five crit, that's pretty good. Regen and armor for the elite. Actually, we have one more wave before the elite. That's really good news. Slow those enemies down, please. This is one armor, one regen. Eh. Not that good. Best scaling potato for endless. That's a good question. Might be Saber, but I'm not sure. I don't think it's loud. Piggy Bank turns off after wave 20, but Saber still gets percent damage from unspent money, which can become a, a very large resource. Your items become prohibitive, prohibitively expensive. So one of the best ways for Saber to gain stats is just hoard money. Loud is currently the record? Okay. I guess I could see that. Claw is a 2 time 2.15x crit multiplier. Interesting. Do you think Claw fits into the bill? Let's let's add one. It's good. I guess lure is okay. I probably can't kill the loot aliens though. Let's just lock it actually. Dodge a little damage. I don't know if this will be good enough. Let's see. Yeah. No. Didn't have enough move speed there. 10% move speed was not enough. Uh, a couple times I got tapped by the ring attack because I could not move out of its attack range quite quickly enough. All right, I'm gonna give one more attempt to Jack here. I'm still not sure what my best option is. Maybe sticks? Let's try sticks. I've already tried guns over and over again. They don't do it. Shurikens? No, shurikens are one of the worst weapons on Jack. Just throw your run in the dumpster. No thank you. No thank you. Thinking sticks here because of the primitive bonus to your HP, which seems pretty important for this character. Double early coffees is also really lucky. Sticks are cheap too. Laser guns and over 100 attack speed. Yeah, that I could see working. I could definitely see that working.
Very important on Jack. Very, very important. Not gonna take bag. This is okay. This is very good damage output so early on though. This is certainly one of our best yet. We even have almost 40 max HP already. Already feels like one of the easiest starts. attack speed. Here we go. Nine move speed. Also not something to be ignored. I think we're going to go negative luck club this time. Negative crit club too as well. Last harvesting up. Let's grab percent damage. Just stick to it. Triple coffee. Here we go. We mastered Necro today, that's right. It was a really good day in the Spire, that's for sure. Finally, the champion belt acquired. Look at that, easy. Farming the big aliens for money. More range seems quite good for sticks, actually. I'm not gonna take Alien Baby, I think that's crazy. I'll keep with the low luck stat. Seems 
fine. So we have eight dodge, one armor, 31 move speed. 31 move speed, very important here. More healing looks like it would help. Take life, take some life steal. Yeah, let's add a little bit of life steal, and just a little bit of melee damage. Wow, I'm offered a fighting stick four. This does not scale sticks. Believe, believe it or not, even though it's got stick in the name, it's not a stick, but it is still a pretty good weapon. Grab it. So yeah, this is plus for every additional stick, plus 24. And it will scale with our levels substantially. So I'm going to grab it here. Ooh, lure. Lure for wave 10. Yeah, I got to take note from Strike Dummy. Like, why even have stick in the name if it doesn't scale the other stick? Just call it a Bakken, come on. Missed opportunity. I'd love to see that patched. There's one change I'd make to Potato, it's that. Make fighting stick count for stick. Please, let sanity prevail. Do we not live in a just society? Wait, don't answer that. Uh, I'll take four melee, even though I don't love it. And I actually would like even more range. I am a range monkey. Also a speed monkey. And I like coffee. There a reason to avoid the crates? They're health pickups, so they actually it's actually quite hard to pick up the crates unless you're not at full health, um, as they will not be magnetized to you unless you're missing hit points. They're automatically collected at the end of the wave, so you don't need to pick them up during the wave if you don't want to. So here, for example, I have to go directly on top of this to pick it up unless I'm missing health, in which case it zooms towards me like that. Wait, there's a third loot alien. Rude. Ooh. I don't really care about the luck, but 18 harvesting, I'll take. Wait, max HP melee damage is good, and... Chance for double materials sounds great. 12 max HP sounds excellent. And more experience sounds good, too. Take a schmoop. Take a schmoop. Keep me alive, please. One more roll. 
Medical turret, that'll keep me alive. Jetpack's also kind of a thing. Lots of speed, lots of dodge. That would bring us to 50% move speed. I'm down, actually. No aspirations of killing the elite, mind you. Not this one, anyway. Oops. Oh, come on. This is where move speed is very nice. The faster you are, the easier it is to dodge various things, including these stupid chasing mummy enemies. Trying to dodge both the elite and the mummies at the same time, nigh impossible without like 30 move speed. Keep investing in the dodge stat. I'd love to max our dodge. Currently at 34. That's pretty good. More regen. Don't take a weird ghost. Eh, I'll take one. This is more dodge. We lose some life steal. Hey, double weird ghost. There's no downside. Easy. Easy. Take a damage up. Wow, we are very fast. Good dodges. Feh. Armor, please. Armor, please. Mm, metal is okay. Yeah, we like all those stats. Though I don't really need the speed. Improve stick. Oh, here we go. Speed is capped at 53. I'm fine with that. Don't mind if I do. Take this for five dodge. I would love more dodge. Just buy it. Zooming. Or dodge. Want that dodge capped. Do I want a plasma sledgehammer? Not really. Take one more XP up. Make the fighting sticks better. So whenever you kill one of these big 
crying purple enemies. Three little ranged enemies will spawn afterwards. So you want to make sure to stick around, wait for the ranged enemies to spawn, then kill them. So they don't overwhelm you. Not as big a problem on Jack here, but still want to get rid of them all. Does seem to be the best Jack attempt so far. Nine crit. We have minus four crit. Take the max health. Just become tanky. Exoskeleton. Five armor, five speed. Torture. Fifteen max health cannot heal other than the four HP per second. We've got twenty-two HP regen. Let's take the exoskeleton. And a steroids. Oh, that's right, our speed is capped, but we wanted that five armor, mostly. Five is a lot of armor. Okay, well, heck, all of this. I hate it. No, I hate it. Regen! Save me. Good, good. This part, I remember this part. It's got us last time because I was at 10% move speed, now I'm at 50. It's a lot better at 50. Good wave. Terrifying, but good. Four melee damage, ten harvesting. Too late for that. Nuke launcher. Classic sticks and nuke launcher build. You know what? I'm not even going to question it. I'm just going to do it. Just make it happen. Does being over the cap give us a buffer from negatives? Yes. Yeah. So, for example, I could take a warrior helmet and not lose any speed. Yeah. Totally allowed. No, the loot alien was buffed. No, you must die, though, sir. Sir. Sir, come back. Oh, no. Kill the other stuff, I guess. It's terrifying. Help! Dodge. More tech speed. Plus 10 damage for every stick. Yeah, the red stick doesn't seem that good, actually. Move speed, easy.
run away. <laughs> ah! Alright, that wasn't too bad. Non-stick jack. Let's see, 20k, 10k, 18k, yeah. Nuke launchers out damaging the sticks. Uh, and I'll take four more armor, go to 18 armor. Explosion damage. Oh, hello. Sure, why not? Cap that dodge at 60. I think we upgrade the nuke launcher to four. 120 base damage, one second cooldown. You'll love to see it. Another med turret sounds great. More regen sounds great. Uh, more regen sounds great. Snipe shots though. The range on the nuke launcher is a lot, right? Base of 800, and we have apparently 166 range stats somehow. I said I was a range monkey. Oh, the shackles, that's right, that's how. The shackles. Yeah, the red nuke launcher also has a very big uh, base AoE. Even without any explosion size here, it just hits a lot of foes at the same time. I think this is my first time getting jacked to wave 20. We're overcapped on speed, so helmet seems good, actually. Uh, garden's not worth it. Eighty damage alien eyes sounds fine. Add a boxing glove. Go wave 20. Here goes. Do not expect to kill the bosses. But we can sure dodge them for 90 seconds. Loot alien. Get him. Got him. Uh oh. The turrets go. run through the circle attack here as long as we stay moving in a consistent direction. Just go in a big circle. Oh, 
GG, there's the Jack win. That was tough. Definitely took quite a few attempts to get there. Not sure this was um, the sticks necessarily that caused the win. Uh, I feel like we did get partially lucky with a bunch of coffees early for tons of attack speed. We also got tons of movement speed, which I think was actually the cause of our success. 50 plus move speed here. That said, sticks did seem really comfortable in the early game. They did enough damage to kill all of the enemies up to wave 10, no problem. And the primitive max HP bonus kept us alive early very easily as well. So we were able to build tanky without too much sacrifice of the damage output. And I think that helped a lot. So I would, I would recommend sticks on Jack. Uh, I don't know that it's the best, but it definitely seems like it can be viable. Cool. GG. GG. All right, well, that means there's only five characters left. Brawler, Chunky, Engineer, Explorer, and Glutton. Other than Explorer and Glutton, I'd call these pretty easy for the most part. That'll be next time we play Brotato, though. As today, it is time for us to wind down the stream, my dear friends. Thank you again for all the viewership, all the support today during the uh, Iron Clad run to start out our stream. Thanks for hanging out during Brotato, those of you who are here now. And have a wonderful evening, folks. We will be back at it tomorrow, not later than noon Eastern time. We're going to be starting out our stream tomorrow with Dave the Diver, our community voted game for July. Which I'm pretty excited to try out. Should be a wild time. See you later, Superman, Faley, I'm Rando, Wigglepuss, Werewolf 4K, Miskatonic Blue, Sacraville, Maximum Weasel, The Power of Smooth Music, good night to ya, Mr. Chevious, Steph Soror, Helmshank, Sith Lord Waffles, and everybody else. Dave ain't here, man. Peace, my friends, and good night.